serving fans throughout the Midwest and even more around the world. This is the Show Me Sports Network. The following is an exclusive broadcast property presentation of the Show Me Sports Network and is a high fidelity all digital broadcast. This broadcast is copyrighted by the Show Me Sports Network for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this broadcast without the Show Me Sports Network's written consent is prohibited. crew is ready in the Doc and Norm Direct broadcast booth. Exclusive pre-game coverage of Jefferson City Renegades baseball is brought to you by Animal Medical Center of Jefferson City, Avon with Michelle Carty, Boone County Journal, Centurion Cares, Christopher Scott, Farmers Insurance, Doc and Norm Direct, Eddie Goodell Society, Han Custom Laser Engraving, LLC. Hoslog Landscaping and Design. Last Sentinel Firearms. Retrieving Freedom. River Oak Christian Academy. Sawdust Studios. State Tech of Missouri. And Walk Off Wood Bat Company. The excitement is building in the stands. And the tension is rising in the dugout as first pitch is just around the corner. You're listening to exclusive coverage of Jefferson City Renegades Baseball on the Renegades Radio Network and the Show Me Sports Network. Now let's go live to the field to the Doc and Norm Direct Broadcast booth. And a very pleasant good evening, everyone. Blake Asaway here with you, joined by Ben Schmitz as we are getting set for... Renegades baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network as we bring you postseason baseball as the Renegades have found their way into the wild card round as they've got to win to get in as they will be matching up. They're the third seed matching up against the number two seed, the Sedalia Bombers. This is the South Division wild card game again at Sedalia. As these two teams very familiar with each other, this is matchup number nine this season. Winner goes on to play tomorrow. That will be at Joplin as the South Division Championship will be up for grabs. The winner of that game will go on to play for the Meek League Championship. Also tonight, the Clarinda A's, the number two seed in the North Division. They're hosting the Des Moines Peak Prospects. Their game also set for 7 o'clock. That the North Division wild card game. And then uh, the winner will play the top-seeded St. Joseph Mustangs tomorrow at 7 o'clock. And then uh, the winners of both those games tomorrow match up on Thursday, Friday, and or Saturday if needed in the best of a three-game series. Well, Ben, we've uh, seemed like we've had a lot of time that we've been calling games this season, but yet here we are as the season is uh, coming to a close very quickly for one of these two teams. The other one will live another day. Yeah, and we should have a lot of fun here tonight at Day Field. It's two teams who know each other very well, like you mentioned. Ninth matchup on the season, and they played each other relatively close in all their matchups. Renegades did finish under 500 against the Bombers at 3-5, and five. but when you look at those losses, the last two each by a run, very close games. Um, much earlier in the season, the Renegades had a little bit more excess, success against the Bombers, but when you look at the Renegades roster today, it's, it's not the full-strength roster it was about a month ago, but all things considered, this may be the, the healthiest and most complete that this team has been for the past couple of weeks. You're going to add back in Adonis Forte, Radiant Boyer potentially available out of the bullpen tonight. Other hitters as well that we have not really seen in, in the lineup each and every day. I mean, c- considering the circumstances, you have to be pretty good where, where things stand headed into the game tonight. Yeah, you're absolutely right on that. Uh, you know, some players have had a chance to have a little bit of time off, as you mentioned, to get a little healthier. We've had players who were, have been out on vacation or a few other different reasons. We also have some new faces at this point. You know, they're not new to the Renegade squad because they've been here for a couple of weeks or they're returning players. But uh, we have some guys that uh, played a lot of time last year that are back to help make a push this year. And, uh, you know, really at this point, Renegades finished the regular season at 17-24. and 24. For the Bombers, they finished with a record of 22-21. and 21. But as we get into the game here today, really, it's one of those that uh, doesn't matter what your record was. It doesn't matter how you got here, what you did or didn't do to get here. It's really about, uh, you know, winning. You keep playing, you lose, and uh, you're done. Oh, absolutely. You can just completely throw the records out the window. I mean, when you look at the uh, whole infrastructure of the Mink League playoffs, I mean, you just got to win four games and you're the champion of the whole league. So it's, I mean... 
really outside of having being one of the two teams that gets the bye for the other four record could not mean anything at all because it's just a one game and, and then you win or advance as loser goes home and you've mentioned it in years past where there's been times where the best team in the league has ran through everyone for June and July and then get to the end of the month in July playoffs and they're over their season's done in one game so especially against these two teams right here who've played each other close uh, Renegades just a game under 500 against the Bombers at three and five and like you said seems like every game between these two ends in a walk off I mean, it's if you're even looking at the lineups. I mean, when I was writing down the Bombers lineup card, pretty much the first seven names are the exact same we saw at this ballpark last week. So uh, similar plans of attack, and uh, uh, I'm really excited to see what tonight's order for the Renegades Carter to Carter Gorling does when he takes them out in about 15 minutes. Yeah, and that's you know the thing here is we've talked about it uh, with Meek League baseball. You get late in the year, and it can be a little rough trying to make sure you have a healthy crew, trying to make sure that you have players. Uh, coaches shut them down sometimes players have to shut themselves down for other reasons but uh, making sure you know you put a squad out there that is capable of being competitive and uh, trying to win the game as I said a few familiar faces on the uh, Renegades roster but a few new ones or at least late additions but as you said very familiar too with the Bombers but there are a few new names on that list that haven't had uh, all season long for uh, either because they're a late addition or they've had some health issues that they've had to take care of in order to uh, get here to tonight's game. Yeah, and I think the big thing tonight for the Renegades is going to be a faster start. We saw in their couple wins last week against Joplin where they got off to fast starts. They won both those games. First one they put up 14 runs, second one they put up six, came from behind in the middle innings. But you can't have a sort of same situation that happened here at this ballpark last week where you don't have a base runner through the first six innings. Renegades were lucky enough to come back and scratch cross four to send it to the nine, tied four apiece. But against a really good offense in the Bombers, if you fall behind by three or four runs, after the first four or five innings, you can't expect that offense to keep quiet and to give yourself enough time to come back. When you look at the middle of this Bombers lineup, there's guys hitting over 300 with on-base percentages over 400. So for the Renegades, I think they need to give their starter Goring some early run support. And you can you can live with being tied to the first couple innings, but I, what I don't think you can live with and I think would be asking for a lot for your offense is to say, okay, it's the seventh inning, you're down four to one, go score three runs and bail us out here to bring us back. No, I think you need to be going into the seventh inning, switch it around. You're leading four to one and still have either Goring out there or turn it over to the back of your bullpen, whether you're going to bring in the starter Boyer in relief tonight or save him for tomorrow or you're going to turn to Schmidt, stuff like that. You need to be in the lead and not trailing having to come from behind. That plays much more into the Renegade's strengths. Yeah, I, I would agree 100%. I think you're right on that. And another thing, too, in those last two games, so, you know, we'll, we'll call a spade a spade. Saturday's game at Chillicothe, that was uh, that was a game that was uh, purely just for uh, what I what I say entertainment and for fun. Yeah, um, for record purposes. Yeah, it was a game yeah. that was scheduled. We want to make good on all of our games in the season. Chillicothe had nothing to play for. Matter of fact, before the game started, players were turning in their uniforms, turning in their gear. They were uh, doing all calls to get stuff back. So they had nothing to play for. We had already clinched third place. We only took 14 players to the game on uh, on Saturday. So that's why we had Maltaby and Schmitz hitting. Uh, we had players in different positions. Pretty much our outfielders played infield and our infielders played outfield is sort of kind of how it ended up uh, shaking out just a little bit. But but uh, we, we made good on what we needed to do. And our guys had fun. And I know Chillicothe had fun. The umpires had fun. I think yeah. we all had a good time. And that's something that, you know, that uh, we, uh, I mean, it was it was mentioned that uh, the, the, the two coaches got together and said, look, let's not get anybody hurt. Let's have a good time. Let's enjoy it. But we're going to go and we're going to give a good show for the fans because Chillicothe still had a home Saturday night game. So it was important to us to show up and do that. But the previous two games, the uh, Renegades were able to score 20 runs over those two games against Joplin. They outscored uh, they, they outscored them 20 to 10. 14 of those 20 runs came with two outs on the board. So that's another key for the Renegades is if they can find a way to get those runs on, particularly when two outs are on the board, I think that's going to be another thing that will carry them quite well here tonight. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head with both of those. Not only score early, but score with two outs, come with clutch hits. And the two-out hitting is not something that the Renegades have been That's not been a strong point of the roster. It has been the last couple days against Joplin and Chillicothe, but overall in the season it's not been a strong point. So we continue that, continue the good vibes. Like you said, it was a fun day all around on Saturday. Um, we continue that, and the Renegades will, be, will, will turn things out right like they need to and walk away here with a win. And I, we're already off to a good start because compared to the where we were when the, this game, 
game was here last week. We at least have umpires here at the start of the game, and we have three times the amount of umpires. One last week, and we've got three here tonight, so we're already off on the right foot for tonight's contest. Absolutely. Well, I think another thing, too, for the Renegades tonight as well is, is uh, you know, they, they were able to put up 14, those 14 runs. They put up 14 hits in those 14 runs, and I don't remember what they had Friday night offhand or uh, Saturday night, but I believe they were in double digits on Saturday, if, uh, if I remember right, or they close to it. 16 hits on Saturday, yeah. so yeah. So granted, we know it was really just a, a game for fun, but, but starting to put up those hits, because you know as, as well as I do, we've seen a whole lot of baseball where the Renegades might have four runs, but they had one hit, two hits. Yep. Or they had six runs and they had three hits. So to see that they were cranking out as many hits or more as the runs they put out, uh, again, is, is a positive for them. And that's something in the, the uh, trend in the right direction. And that's really like we've talked about, too, is that that's really, uh, you know, the game of baseball, game, game of any sports game in general is about peaking at the right time. And I think for the Renegades, they're starting to uh, to peak at that. They're starting to have some guys come through. Saw uh, Jack Matashek had his first home run of the, uh, I believe it was his first home run of the season Correct. here uh, yep. last uh, late last week as well. So he, he got the uh, hips turned on a ball and sent it over the right field fence. So, you know, players are starting to come together, and that's really what it takes. Yeah, and I hope the Renegades can be consistent on the offensive side throughout the uh, duration of this game as well because when you look at their game on Saturday against Chillicothe, and like we've mentioned, wasn't anything too serious about it, but when you look at their lineup, they scored four out of their seven runs in the first three innings. Then through the last six, uh, they never scored more than one in an inning, and there were other innings where they were blank. So it was a fast start, but then kind of died off a little bit. And I know I mentioned have a fast start once again, but hopefully you can just continue to attack the pressure. Force tonight started for the Bombers. Carson out of the game earlier, turn it over to the bullpen, and then potentially just can continue to apply pressure if a uh, bomber score run come right back the next inning, I know that's easier said than done, but uh, it's uh, some consistency would be nice here as well. But it, it, at this point, I feel like I'm asking for a whole lot. If the Renegades can just find any way to win, we'll be happy no matter how they get it done. Well, it's also, you mentioned a very cool night here. My uh, thermometer says 73 degrees, or that's what the uh, weather app is telling me, is 73 degrees. And, uh, you know, what's crazy is we are about 40 degrees cooler than we were have been the last uh, couple of weeks with baseball. It is You almost need a jacket here, if I'm being uh, honest. It's, this, it's cool. This is awesome. I would take this any day of the week. And uh, interesting to see how the wind plays a factor because if you look out at those flags out in center field, I mean, they are waving pretty good. Um, I, w I don't know how much it will play an effect with balls hit up in the air, but it, it certainly seems like he can have one. And uh, I'm just excited to be sitting here in, in, in some cool air, not sweating before first pitch. Yeah, and the sun's not beating down on us either. That's usually a big, big problem we face is the sun just almost becomes unbearable. So we'll take a look at the starting lineups for your Jefferson City Renegades. They're going to lead off with uh, center fielder number 18, Adonis Forte. Then batting second will be number four, left fielder Cole Wagner. Batting third will be the right fielder number six, Tommy Reether, designated hitter. Batting fourth, number 27, Jack Matashak. Playing on first base, batting fifth, number 14 is Luke Fuller. Catching tonight's game, batting sixth is Caden Deal, third baseman. Batting seven, number 13, Andrew Imgarden. Batting eighth, wearing number one at second base is Colby Ott. And batting ninth is shortstop, number 19, and Taylor Hopkins. And on the mound, number 25, Carter Gorling will get the start here in our playoff game. As uh, we said, winner, their season continues. The loser, their season is done for the 2022 campaign as uh, winner will go on to face the Joplin Outlaws tomorrow night in the South Division Final as this is the wild card game here. Of course, North Division 2, Des Moines is at Clarinda taking on the uh, taking on the A's there, that the North Division wild card game as well. For the starters for the Sedalia Bombers, they will start at second base, batting leadoff will be Caden Williams, center fielder batting second, number one, Anthony Hansen. At first base, batting third, number 32, Jake Baker. Batting fourth at third base, number 16, Braden McGinnis. Batting fifth, the right fielder, number 26, Zach Dillman catching. Uh, batting sixth, number 14, Riley Poulton. Batting seventh in left field, number 17, Nick Schmidt. Batting eighth at uh, designated hitter, number 12, Cade Shoup. And the shortstop batting ninth will be number 18, Adam Webb. And on the mound, number 11, Chase Carson to round out their starters as uh, this game, like we said, everything on the line here. They had to do what they needed to do to get here, but we wiped the slates clean, and we start over with a 0-0 record. Yeah, and I, I'm just excited now as we 
line the players up on the first base side for the Renegades and as the uh, Bombers take the field. I'm just ready to get things going and get, get these teams out on the field and uh, I, I feel really good about the top of this Renegades lineup. You mentioned it just a moment ago. You've got Forte, Wagner, Reether, Matishek, one through four, all hitting uh, pretty much around that 300 spot and all with on base percentages over 400. Lefty hitters against the right-handed starter in Carson. You feel really good about those top four. And I didn't even mention the five spot, Luke Fuller. We know how much power he has. And especially over the last couple of days, he's been picking up the timing a whole lot. So it, You've got to feel good about the Renegades' chances to strike early, but if I'm just if I'm going to have to pick one, I think at some point throughout this game tonight's first baseman Luke Fuller will have a big hit that will either put the Renegades out in front or bring them to within tied or close to it. I think he's going to show out with a couple runners on tonight. Yeah, he had one of the hardest hit balls too that we've seen this season. He smoked a uh, a ball, I believe it was a double, smoked it yep. into left field and just about hit the stuffing out of the ball as he just hammered it there was able to get uh was it three rbis I it believe? was bases clearing rbi double and like you said about what i think one of the hardest hit balls we've seen all season and that was the night matishek hit a home run too so that's saying something because matishek put good wood on his blast but that that four bases clearing double was an absolute rocket that's one of those it's a shame we don't have the exit velocity here because i i would guess that that one was pushing or did pass triple digits on the gun well, we're going to take a quick break here and get you back for the uh, first pitch as you're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Creating custom, handcrafted woodworking projects has never been easier. Become a member of Sawdust Studios and enjoy 24-7 access to a woodworker's paradise. Outfit with industry-leading, professional-grade tools, Sawdust Studios offers endless woodworking possibilities. Don't have woodworking experience? No problem, as Sawdust Studios offers affordable classes from a community of woodworkers, experienced designers, and master craftsmen. Youth classes are also offered for those junior woodworkers. For more information, search Sawdust Studios on Facebook or find them online at Sawdust. Sawdust247.com. Sawdust Studios, your community wood shop. River Oak Christian Academy has been providing a strong biblical foundation and academic excellence within a Christian environment to students for more than 16 years. Located in the Jefferson City, River Oak Christian Academy offers kinder prep through 7th grade with 8th grade to be added in the 2023-2024 school year. River Oak Christian Academy's primary goal is the discipleship of the next generation to impact the world for Christ. Average class sizes are just 16 students with a student body composed of families from over 30 area churches. Kinder prep offerings include 3 and 5 full day sessions with kindergarten offering a half day and full day programs. To find out more about River Oak Christian Academy calling at 573 634 3983. Throughout the course of any game, different actions stand out to different people. But everyone remembers a walk-off, especially if it's a walk-off wood bat. Handcrafted right here in Missouri, walk-off wood bat company bats are made with premium grade maple, ash, and birch, fully customizable to make it truly yours. From the length and weight to the barrel and handle color, you're able to customize every feature of your wood bat, including personalized engraving with a 45-day warranty. In addition to selling custom handcrafted bats, they also offer a selection of bat accessories, including lizard skin bat grips and batting gloves. To help find your confidence at the plate, give walk-off wood Woodbat Company a call at 816-261-1014 or visit wowbats.com. Hi, this is Nick Hoslog, owner of Hoslog Landscape and Design. Every day, my highly trained team of experts works hard to give you the outdoor living area you've been dreaming of. By focusing solely on landscaping and hardscape construction, this has made us the preferred landscape and design company serving Jefferson City and the Central Missouri area. Thank you for all your continued support in voting us as winners of the Reader's Choice Awards and Jefferson City's Best multiple years running. When you are ready to begin your dream outdoor project, call us at 573-301-9464 to schedule an estimate or visit hosloglandscape.com. Well, we're just about set for our ball game to get underway here. Blake Hasaway joined by Ben Schmidt from the Doc and Norm Direct Broadcast booth. Don't forget to go riding with Doc and Norm, Mid-Missouri's leader in Premier Group Travel. Group sizes from 1 to 100 or beyond, they do it all. Doc and Norm, the official transportation provider of the Renegades. They get us to all of our road games safely, efficiently. Most importantly, they get us to those games in style. As to book your next spot on your next adventure, call them 573-256-1991 or email reservations at moexpress.com. These two teams again, the ninth time they're matching up this season. But really, all that matters right now is it is an 0-0 record between these two. Winner moves on to play tomorrow as they will be playing in the uh, South Division final at Joplin against the Outlaws, the loser. Turns in their gear, the season is over. As first look we've seen, I think, 
According to uh, the uh, Presto Sports, I could not find the starting pitcher in Chase Carson on there. Yeah, neither could I. So uh, night and day difference between the Renegade starter Gorling and the Bomber starter Carson, who gives 32 innings for Gorling and zero innings for Carson. But uh, uh, I, I believe I mixed up in the pregame and said that he was a right-hander. He is a left-handed pitcher and looks to have a pretty good stuff coming out of that left-handed slot. And he's going to have just a slight advantage facing the first four hitters in this Renegades lineup, all batting from the left side. So... Uh, We'll see what the Renegades hitters can do, try and turn that stuff around, take it to right field, and uh, if they can do that, Renegades should be in for some success here early. Well, leading off will be center fielder and Adonis Forte. As for Adonis, he is 5'11", 185-pound freshman at Rockhurst, hails from Omaha, Nebraska, left-handed batter, right-handed thrower. Been, uh, been a few days since we've seen him, had a vacation plan, but I know him and his family were listening. They were down over, I guess I should say up and over yeah, at Washington, D.C. So first offering from Carson to Forte. He'll foul that off the corner of the uh, cage here on the other side right above the heads of the Bombers' dugout. So we'll be down to the count 0-1. Forte is exactly 400 on base percentage back in the Leonard Gates lineup for the perfect time. 0-1 offering. There's going to be a bouncing ball. That's going to go foul down the first baseline. So two pitches. And Forte will be down 0-2 as he's matching up with Carson on the mound again. Couldn't find Carson in Presto Sports, so this may be his first start here for the Bombers, I guess. Quite the Talk time about for a pressure, yep. yeah, pressure start here. The on-deck circle is Cole Wagner. He was Saturday night's coach. It's outfielder, pitcher, and coach. That one's going to be smoked in the same location as Forte has got a bullseye over there he's aiming for above the dugout for the Bombers. Well, I just think back to the starter tonight, Carson, I just think the Renegades are happy to not have you having to face Arison Jimenez, who was perfect through six against them. Oh, two pitch. That one's going to be in there for called strike three as Bolton will throw down to third base. They'll go around the horn. So out number one now will be Cole Wagner stepping in. Wagner, 5'8", 170-pound freshman. He's also a player at Rockers. He's from Festus, Missouri, left-hander across the board. Said we've seen him in the outfield, we've seen him in the infield, we've seen him on the mound, and we saw him at head coach interim, 24-hour head coach on Saturday. Well, that was perfect location on the strike three call to Forte right at the knees. First pitch to Wagner upstairs and side ball one. Be interested because when Forte came off after that strike, I went over to talk to Tommy Reith at the on-deck header, maybe tell him a little about the pitcher. We're interested to hear what he said. That pitch, that one also upstairs, so that'll make it two balls and no strikes. Again, we have some luxury here for the postseason, Mink League postseason play. We have three umpires instead of the normal two. So two ball, no strike count. Next pitch to Wagner. He's going to slice that one. It'll be uh, held onto by the catcher for strike one. Well, Wagner, the Renegades, on base king for all those that qualified in terms of at bats. 433 on the season. 2 1 offering. That one's inside for ball three. And a large portion of that on base for Wagner came via the walk. Red the, led the Renegades in walks, had over 20, and he's got himself a chance here to do it in the first inning of this playoff game. So 3 1 offering on its way from Carson. That one's going to be fouled straight back. So we will go full. We'll have to say, though, that Wagner, uh, Matashek gave him a run for his money in terms of the on-base crown. Wagner at 433 and Matashek at 432. Saturday's game uh, decided that one. So payoff pitch on its way. That one's going to be a bouncing ball to the third baseman. He'll glove the high hop. He'll throw to first in time for out. Number two goes as a 5-3 put out. Well, good work there by McGinnis, the third baseman. Wagner moving quickly up the line. Didn't waste any time getting the ball out of his glove and put it right on the money over to the first baseman, Baker. And a good start here on the mound for Carson. Obviously uh, working well against the lefties, working both on the inside and outside part of the zone. So Tommy Reether will step in now for Tommy's 5'9", 175-pound junior. He hails from Washington, Missouri. Plays at Missouri s &T. He's a left-handed batter, right-handed thrower. He takes a big cut and a miss on the first pitch from Carson. So he'll be down in the count at 0-2. Next delivery is going to be on its way. That one, they're going to appeal it. They say he went around. Not sure if I agree with that one. So Reether will have to open up the stance a bit here, which is what he does. He'll kick that right leg back a little bit. Carson's 0-2 offering is outside for ball one. Well, Reether, a very short sample size with the Renegades, but put up good numbers, hit 308 in just the couple games he played here with Jefferson City. 
So one two offering from Carson will be on its way. There's going to be one swung on and miss. Got him with the uh, low inside pitch. That'll be three up and three down. As no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the first inning. You're listening to exclusive coverage Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. The following public service announcement is brought to you by the Eddie Goodell Society, Jefferson City Chapter 10, doing little things to make a big difference. Want to make a big difference in your community? Be kind to others, drive safely, and put litter in its proper place. Join us in celebrating Eddie Goodell's historic Major League appearance as a member of the St. Louis Browns by doing something nice for someone today. Take a walk, Eddie! When things come out of left field, having a game plan matters. Farmers Insurance has over 90 years of experience helping people play through every stage of the game. We've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything. Talk to Farmers Agent Christopher Scott at 573-896-0131 to see how I can help you stay in the game. That's Christopher Scott at 573-896-0131. We are farmers. Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. Underwritten by Farmers, Truck Fire Insurance Exchanges, and Affiliates. Products not available in every state. We go to the bottom of the first inning as the Renegades are three up and three down. And their half of the frame. On the mound for the Renegades will be Carter Gorling. Ben, I believe you've got some stats on him there. I do, and I'm very excited. I do, and I'm very excited to see what Gorling can offer for the Renegades tonight. Obviously, a high-pressure situation, and Gorling really came on as a starter late for the Renegades, especially in the month of July. Uh, went 32 innings pitch, struck out 35, so over a strikeout an inning. Only walked 11 and gave up just two home runs on the season. All that equates to a 3 3 8 ERA. And best start of the season for Gorling, definitely a couple weeks ago in game one of a doubleheader where he went the full seven and struck out 12, gave him pitcher of the week honors. Yeah, that's a big thing that stands out to me for sure. First pitch down, central called strike one. And he got the uh, Mink League pitcher of the week. If that's not stats for a Mink League pitcher of the week, then I don't know what is. As Gorling will look back in, 0-1 pitch, that one outside. As Deal he is catching behind home plate, that makes it one ball and one strike. You know, he has been a, uh, a surprise pitcher almost as, you know, we've seen him a lot on first base, but he has done a great job on the mound. That one's going to be fouled back, so he will be ahead in the count at one ball and two strikes. Well, look for going to his tack the zone. Obviously had more strikeouts and inning pitch, so that bodes well. Uh, but for the walks, too, it basically equates to about one walk every three innings for Goring. So he's been in the zone pretty much all season. So one ball, two strike count. Gorling looks in, Williams to bat. That pitch. Miss just outside, so we go even at two balls, two strikes. The second baseman, Caden Williams, stepping in. So we said these two teams match up quite well. That's two balls, two strikes. Deal lays down the sign. Now Gorlin agrees. 2-2 two -two pitch, that one just a bit upstairs and outside. Now we're full. Well, Williams is going to make make Gorling work here. Williams just a tick under 400 with the on base at 392. Also a real good hitter at 281. Perfect leadoff hitter for the Bombers. Gorling looks in. Payoff pitch is on its way. That one in there for called strike three. And Williams knew it as before the home pay umpire rang him up, he was headed to the dugout. That's one heck of a pitch to throw in a 3-2 count for Goring. Went with the off speed there. You've got to have a whole lot of trust in that pitch to think that you can land it for a strike. And that's exactly what Goring did. Yeah, and Williams just left the bat on his shoulder. Love that as a start for Goring here. So one out here. Second batter that Goring will face is center fielder Anthony Hansen. He steps in left-handed batter. First pitch to him outside, ball one. He's playing center field here tonight. Stepping in, no batting gloves. You know, he's got some tough hands here to step in without batting gloves. Gorling looks in. He agrees on the sign, 1-0 offering. That one upstairs, that makes it 2-0. Well, I hope the Renegades pitchers can get out Hanson tonight because Hanson had one heck of a game here last week. In five at-bats, he was on base four times with three walks, a single, also had a sack fly. He was pretty incredible at the top of the lineup. A 2-0 offering. That one's going to be a bouncing ball fouled on the first base line, so that will take the count. Two balls and one strike. Yeah, Hanson in the two spots tonight. Last night was in the leadoff, or last week was in the leadoff spot, and like I said, went single, walk, walk, sack, fly, walk. Only time he was retired was a sack, fly, and that's not even an official offer. Jake Baker in the on-deck circle for the Bombers. 2-1 offering from Gorling. That one upstairs. That makes it 3-1. 
Hits and clearly going to make Goring work, although the 2-1 pitch there are pretty, pretty well upstairs, not really close. But on the other ones, not too bad pitches from Goring, and uh, Hanson took them. So 3-1 offering, that one upstairs. So it's going to be a walk issued for Hanson. Yeah, good patient at bat there from the lefty. And Goring, I don't know what happened. The ball came back to him, and I think it hit him because now he's laying down on the ground. And the Renegades head coach, Mike Demu, is going to go out and check on him. I didn't see what happened, but he's grabbing his head. I think the throwback hit him in the head, and that cannot be a worse start for the Renegades. And now you just got to hope Gorling's okay. So it did hit Gorling in the head as I was looking down at my score sheet. and I was riding base on ball. All of a sudden I look up, Gorling's on the ground, and the ball's kicked away. And I, I hope I didn't see what I thought I saw because I saw something on the side of his head. Okay, that was just hair, not blood but looks like I hope Goring is going to be okay because uh, no, matter how, 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 no matter how fast it's thrown, taking a baseball to the head can't feel real good. So Mike D'Amelia, head coach for the Renegades, is out talking to Gorling as Looks like nothing more than I think just a little bit of bloody mouth for Gorling, but you think he's going to be all right. It's obviously Gorling and the catcher deal first time they've worked together all season with the deal being such a late addition. And I uh, just think miscommunication right there. Now, like I said, we were both looking down at our score sheet, so didn't get exactly what it was that happened. Gorling, I think, is going to be okay. I think they're asking for a towel or some water. Yeah, Gorling looks to be all right. I mean, for yeah, obviously getting, I think, I believe, based on how he's acting got hit in the mouth so that's probably best case scenario if you're going to get hit in the head because I don't think if you're getting hit in the mouth it'll give you a good chance to get a concussion so obviously could knock a few teeth around but considering he looks to be all right I think it turned out about as good as it could be and uh Maud be quick out of the dugout <laughs> to get him some water Mr. So. Uh, Mr. Hit himself yeah I hope he actually got to keep that base. You were in the oh, dugout. Yeah, he did. did. He yeah, we called ball? for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we saw him calling for it. I didn't know if they were <laughs> going to give it to him, and they did. And I was like, I, I hope that actually gets to I said, I said in the dugout that I said here 30, 40, 50 years from now, that ball is still going to be on his mantle, and he's going to be telling his grandkids or great-grandkids about about uh, Saturday night. It won't be about any other game where we've got Saturday night's his, game. His parents were sitting right behind us and said that that was the first at-bat he's had since he was a sophomore in high school. So. Yeah, he, he also had some batting gloves. I, I don't know where he got them from. I, I don't remember what they were, but uh, one of the leagues he played in, he, he uh, wound up with a pair of batting gloves, and he said they've sat on his shelf at home for uh, uh, for a lot of time and hasn't had any use for them. And so he uh, got to break them in. They were as stark white as white could be. Well, yeah, those are the, you're, it's easy to tell with white batting gloves <laughs> whether or not they've been used, and it was easy to tell that they had not been used. But uh, more importantly here, it looks like Goring's all right. Throwing a couple warm-up pitches, and uh, I think he's going to be good enough to stay in this one. Yeah, he has a conversation here while he's pitching with head coach for the Renegades, Mike D'Amelia. He just shook his head and said, yep, coach, I'm going to be okay. So we should be ready for baseball now as one out, runner on first base. That is Hanson as first baseman Jake Baker stepping in. What an odd start, though. That's not something you see a whole lot in a baseball game. And just you got to be thankful that it ended the way it did and not any any worse for, for not only the game but for just Carter Gloring and his overall health because uh, baseball to the face or head can, uh, can be pretty damaging. Yeah, we saw that first time in, uh, I think, ever in all the games I've called. We saw a pitcher take a ball, line drive right to the forehead or the uh, temple almost rather later on as first pitch to Baker is going to miss ball one. That was... Uh, is that against the Mudcats? Maybe it was. It was a home game. I see that it was early your in guess the season. As good as mine. Yep. Yeah, early in the season, but had a ball that was just rocketed off the bat and hit the uh, pitcher in the forehead, on the side of the forehead. One zero pitch. That ball is going to be lifted into left field. Going back on it is Wagner. He'll settle under it, make the grab for out number two. So that will be a quick out right there as Gorling battling back after being. Hit in the face, in the mouth, as this will be third baseman Braden McGinnis. But good news with that one, this one as well, but that one where the pitcher was hit in the head, he uh, walked off under his own power. He might not have known exactly where they were playing at that night, but he walked off, didn't break the skin, nothing there. Had a big contusion, a big, just had a lot of swelling. Looked like a golf ball under his, on his forehead. Is that first pitch in there, strike one. 
it hit him just kind of like right above the not quite on the corner of the eye but just right above had about a golf ball sized knot on there so he was okay in the same way Carter looks to be okay as two on oh one offering will be forthcoming as he's matched up with Braden McGinnis there's a swing and a miss at a ball in the dirt for strike two. Yeah, Goring looks to be all right. Getting a really good batter in Baker out a moment ago on a routine fly ball to left, and now getting two strikes against McGinnis. Only has to deal with Hanson off of first, and uh, get, looks to be putting himself in position to get through this first score. It's just needing one more strike. I believe Baker is a KU product, I think, if I remember right. 0-2 offering. That one's going to miss. Coming up, but not throwing to first base is Deal. Well, Baker has one heck of a stat line for the season, hitting over 330 coming in today. So for going to get him out a moment ago, uh, a tall task. And now another another tough one is McGinnis on the season, hitting 279 with a 379 on base. So one ball, two strike count. Again, two outs, runner on first base. That pitch, that one's going to be hit foul. It goes down the first base line, hooks near the fence, so we'll still stay at a one ball, two strike count. Well, it looks like the right-hander McGinnis trying to take that one to right field, just fouled with it and. a uh, I think Goring still having to bother or uh, deal with a little bit of bleeding from the mouth as he continuously is wiping his mouth with that jersey, but not uh, stopping him from pitching here. So one ball, two strike count. He'll look over a couple times at Hanson at first base. Now he'll get set, one, two pitch. That one just missed the outside part of the plate. It missed by about that much. Yeah, I think if that's exactly where Deal had set up, you maybe get that call, but it, it Deal had to move his glove just a little bit outside to, to bring that one in, and it, that's a that's a borderline pitch that just didn't go uh, Gorling's way. So two balls, two strikes here as we play in the bottom of the first inning. Next pitch, that one missed outside. That one a little further outside, so we'll go full three balls, two strikes. Well, back-to-back -back pitches from Gorling where he has put them almost right in the perfect spot on the outside corner for strike three, and now in a 3-2 count, uh, will we see Goring go back to the fastball or try off speed for a third straight pitch? We saw him do it on a full count for the leadoff batter in Williams. That one's going to be a ball hit a mile in the air. Imgarten coming over. Deal goes over as well. Imgarten disappears behind the dugout. That one lands on top of the uh, roof here at the ballpark. So it got out of place, so we'll do it again. Well, Dayfield is the only place where the third baseman would have even chased after that ball because it went over to the left side by the stands and behind the dugout. And normally behind the dugout is out of play, but here at Dayfield you can actually run behind it to make a catch. And we saw that happen against the Renegades last week in the first inning where the third baseman did a catch pretty much in the similar spot except it just stayed in play. So Gorling's payoff pitch. Is on its way. Runner's going to go to second. That one's going to be fouled back, so we'll do it again. Going after we're having to work a little bit here against McGinnis. Thankfully got Baker on just two pitches. Uh, went deep into counts with three with three and two to Williams, three and one to Hanson. And so now the, out of four batters, three times he's gone three balls and really needs to put away McGinnis here. Otherwise, this is going to start turning into a pretty long first inning. So Gorling will look in. He'll get set on the rubber. 3-2 pitch, runner goes. That one's fouled off, so we'll do it again. This upcoming pitch, this will be pitch number 10 of this at bat. Well, it looks like Goring is continuing to go with that off-speed stuff in a 3-2 pitch, and McGinnis looked to be out in front of it there, just got enough bat on it to foul it back. And yeah, we'll see if that's the same strategy here, 3-2 once again, but uh, most importantly, Hanson's getting a work out there, having to steal second every time at first. I know. We'll see if he goes again here. So three balls, two strike count. Runner's going to go. There's a swing and a miss for out number three. So battling back, 10 pitches in that at bat. However, McGinnis is retired with the K. So no runs, no hits, no errors. One left on base as we will go to the uh, top of the second inning. Still a scoreless game. We'll take a break and be back as you're listening to exclusive coverage. Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. At the Boone County Journal, we're with you all the way. We know that you're more than just a subscriber. You're an employer. You're a parent. You're a neighbor. Most importantly, you're a community member. It's our goal to provide you with the latest news, sports, opinions, obituaries, classifieds, and more to keep you informed about your community. To find out more about the Boone County Journal or to subscribe, call 573-657-2334 or visit bocojo.com. The Boone County Journal, we're with you all the way. 
Last Sentinel Firearms is your federally licensed and registered Type 7 FFL manufacturer dealer in Missouri, providing quality products to all types of sports enthusiasts, law enforcement, and individuals across the nation. Orders are currently being fulfilled, offering custom-built pistols and rifles from the AR platform made right here in Missouri. Visit their website at lastsentinelfirearms.com or call them at 417-684-7202 to find out what they've got for you. Last Sentinel Firearms, you are your last line of defense. We go to the top of the second inning. Still a scoreless game here. As it'll be batters four, five, and six due up. The Mattishak, Fuller, and Deal will be the three due up for the Renegades. They've got to find a way to find some offensive production here. Excited to see what Matashek does here to lead off the second inning after the starter Carson was really efficient in the first inning. Matashek had two hits just a couple nights ago in Chillicothe, and I think he's got a good shot here to get Carson who was struck out too and then got the other on the ground ball. Matashek, six foot, 210 pound freshman. He hails from Kirkwood, Missouri, plays at Jefferson College, a freshman there. Left handed batter, right handed thrower. First pitch is upstairs ball one. So he'll be heading the count at 1-0. Carson's next delivery. That one's a big swing and a miss there. He was swinging for the fences and leaving it a one ball, one strike. Yeah, good pitch there. A pretty good location in Matashek just laid on it on a big cut. 1-1 one, one delivery. That one also a big rip and no connection there. Well, that was good pitch sequencing there by Carson. Comes with the fastball, middle of the zone, maybe even close to the knees. And the next pitch has one that starts at the knees and dies out of the zone. Matashek swings over it. 1-2 delivery on its way. There's going to be a ball that's going to be hit right on the money to the shortstop as he makes that grab for out number one. Well, Matashek blistered that baseball on the shortstop. Led played it about as good as he could have, only had to take a couple steps to his right, and that's a tough lineup there for Matashek. But if the Renegades are hitting the ball like that all night, some of those will find spots, and the Renegades will be in business. Well, this will be Luke Fuller stepping in, 6'1", 200-pound freshman at Jury. He's from Chesterfield, Missouri, right-hander across the board. He is... Played all over the mound. He's going to swing and hit that one. It's going to be popped out. Coming over is the first baseman. And judging by the groans and the fact that Luke is still in the batter's box, I guess he did not catch that. Yeah, Baker gave that one a good run. If that hangs up for maybe about another second, second and a half, I think Baker runs it down, but it had some tail action to it. But it will be no balls and one strike as Fuller steps back in next delivery. He's going to hit that one a mile in the air. Going back on it is the shortstop coming in on it, left fielder. He will make the grab to Schmidt for out number two. Well, it was interesting to see how Carson pitched there against his first right-hander coming to the plate in Fuller. And uh, Fuller just gets underneath that one, hits it high in the air, but to shallow left field, and Schmidt plenty of time to run in to make the catch. So this will be uh, Caden Deal stepping in now, the catcher, 5'10", 170-pound sophomore at Northwest Missouri State. Hails from O'Fallon, Missouri, a left-handed batter, right-handed thrower. So two outs here, first delivery to him. He will take that as strike one. And just see how this Renegades lineup does tonight, considering six of the nine starters are left-handed hitters facing a left-handed pitching starter. So one offering will be on its way from Carson. That one missed outside, so we'll go even at one ball, one strike. And not that the Renegade Julie really had an option to put more right-handed starters in the lineup. It's certainly a slight disadvantage, although not a big one. They definitely are left-hand heavy. That one swung on and missed for strike number two. Dealing just a very short sample size on the season, hitting at 250, so basically hitting every four at-bats. On base, though, at 455. So one-two offering. That one's going to be called strike three, and that will be three up and three down as Deal is retired. So no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on the base. We'll go to the bottom of the second inning as you're listening to exclusive coverage, Renegades Baseball, here on the Show Me Sports Network. Serving the capital city and the surrounding area for 70 years, Animal Medical Center strives to provide the best possible medical service for your pet in a caring atmosphere. To promote quality healing and preventative care in a fear-free environment, Animal Medical Center of Jefferson City is a full-service veterinary hospital. Whether your pet has fur, feathers, or scales, Dr. Greg Boyer and Dr. Kayla Terry have the experience and expertise to treat complex medical conditions as well as providing annual well checks and vaccinations. Animal Medical Center of Jefferson City is the only veterinary hospital in the capital city accredited by the American American Animal Hospital Association. To schedule an appointment, call the team at Animal Medical Center of Jefferson City at 573-636-4626. 
running out of some of your favorite Avon products and haven't seen an Avon brochure in quite some time? No need to worry. Avon Independent Sales Representative Michelle Carty can help with your skin so soft, makeup, jewelry, fragrance, and skin care needs. Avon now carries cleaning supplies, clothing, daily essentials, and several small LG electronic items. You now have the opportunity to shop online 24-7 and have your order shipped directly to your front door by shopping with Michelle at mcarty.avonrepresentative.com dot com or find her on Facebook by searching Avon Carty. We go to the bottom of the second inning. And for the uh, Renegade still on the mound, Carter Gorling for his second inning of work. That may not sound... Uh, like too much for most, but if you uh, were here, we missed it. We were looking at our score sheets, but he got drilled right in the mouth on a throw back to him, and he needed a couple minutes to get himself set, but he was okay and stays out here. This will be batters five, six, and seven do up. This will be Zach Dillman, the right fielder, then catcher Riley Poulton, and left fielder Nick Schmidt will be the three that are due up. So first offering here. That one misses, actually called strike one. Thought it was just a hair high, but look late to be call from the umpire. Look to be a little up, but Gorling gets the call. I won't complain about it one bit. That pitch, that one swung on and missed for strike number two. Yeah, Gorling gets an ugly swing there from Dillman, who's hitting just under 300 at 290. Also is in the home run derby, but Gorling here, the, the ter first two pitches in control. So that one is a... And outside, they say that he did not go around, so check swing there. So it'll be one ball and two strikes now. Fun now to get to appeal down to the first base umpire. I know, it's different. Yeah. I can't see him down there, but I know he's there. One-two offering. That one called strike three, out number one. Well, hoping for a quicker inning here from Goring, as although he was scoreless in the first, threw over 20 pitches. And here in the second, that's the way you do it. Throw just four pitches and get a backwards K on Dillman. Goring's third strikeout of the game in four outs. And, four outs. and now hopefully he can keep that up against Poulton, a good hitting catcher. Well, it didn't help that those uh, of those 20 pitches, 10 of them came to the same batter. Well, all that matters, he was able to get him out and keep the bottom off right. the board. That is right. So first pitch in there called strike one for Poulton. Yeah, it's a nice job of Deal to frame that yeah, I was gonna drop down where he needed to. Deal does one heck of a job bringing in pitches back there because that's a borderline pitch that Deal just uh, turned Gorling's way. Oh, one offering. That one bounces by home plate, so that'll make a one ball, one strike. And Poulton, he has caught, I believe, every Bombers game that I have called this season or listened to. He's been behind home plate. That pitch upstairs, outside ball two. Not caught, he's been in the game for every single one. I believe we saw him at second base maybe once, but yeah, he's been a presence in this lineup against the Renegades all season. I don't hitting, know. It, hitting it 250. I don't know if the Bombers actually have another catcher or not on the squad. There's going to be a bouncing ball as Hopkins will glove from the shortstop position. He'll throw. Nice job of Fuller to dig it out. That'll go is out number two. Well, I almost jinxed that there because Hopkins show, so sure-handed at shortstop all season. I started writing down ground out to the shortstop before the throw was even made. And a Fuller had to dig that one out, but he was able to do it. And a big out number two. Hopkins had one a heck of an inning on Saturday in Chillicothe. He recorded three outs in one inning. Uh, the second was a, a kind of a jump throw where he had to jump to get the ball and then threw it sidearm. And then the final, a diving play where he went full out to bring it in and make the out. So he's been one of the Renegades' best defenders all year. So two outs here as left fielder Nick Schmidt steps in. First pitch, he's going to hit a bouncing ball. Ott will glove at second. He'll throw to first in time. He had it hit his chest, but kept it in front of him. It goes as a 4-3 put out. So three up and three down. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on the base path. We go to the third as you're listening to exclusive coverage Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. At Centurion Cares, for more than three decades, their focus has been on exceeding customer expectations for contact center software solutions. Their innovative communication solutions include utility interactive voice response software that allows for smart communication features that let your utility deliver superior customer service 24-7. They also provide other streamlined services like automatic call distribution, automated customer callback, reporting, and quality assurance. To find out more about how Centurion Cares can help your business, call them at 727-421. 
1-800-331-5300 or look them up online at centurioncares.com. Centurion Cares, innovative communication solutions. Moex Dock and Norm Direct is back better than ever. Much more than your number one ground shuttle transportation service to St. Louis Airport. Yes! Moex Dock and Norm Direct is mid-Missouri's leader in premier group travel. Sporting events, concerts, wedding receptions, the lake, winery trips, Branson, plaza shopping, reunions, pub crawls, group sizes from 1 to 100 or beyond. We do it all. Remember, we want you to ride Moex Dock and Norm Direct. We go to the uh, top of the third inning, still scoreless here. As it'll be batters 7, 8, and 9 that'll be due up. That's in Garden, Ott, and Hopkins. Renegades still looking for the first hit, but on a side note, so are the Bombers. Yeah, well, hopefully this uh, game does not start to show, show shades of how it went last week when both teams were scoreless through the first two innings. But uh, this time around... Uh, Renegades starting pitching looking a little bit better in Goring who's thrown two shutout innings but for the Renegades six up six downs hopefully they're able to start getting things going against Carson a little bit sooner than they were able to against a menace last week. So this will be Andrew Imgarden six foot 180 pound freshman at Missouri Bambus he hails from Moberly Missouri left-handed batter right-handed thrower first pitch and they're called strike one. Only difference between this week and last week is no uh, fan who I would assume to have been a menace, his dad screaming loudly for his son between every pitch, which I thought was awesome, but certainly a, a quieter here. Tonight. That one's going to be swung on and miss, so M. Garten will be down in the count at 0 and 2. Well, M. Garten getting on base at a 362 clip, so a good uh, chance here for the Renegades. That pitch, that one's going to be in there for called strike three, so three pitches, one backwards K recorded. Yeah, that's one tough pitch on an 0-2 count. Look to bend just a little below the knees, but Poulton, much like how we said with Deal, Poulton's a great job on the receiving end behind the dish, and he's going to steal some strikes for his pitcher, Carson, and that's just something the Renegades will have to be aware of. So this will be Cole Beyond, 5'10", 180-pound freshman at Jefferson College. Hails from Festus, Missouri, right-hander across the board. First pitch to him. He's going to hit one into left field. Left fielder going to his left. He'll make the grab for out number two. I thought we were going to see a gapper, but... It is, hey, it is hauled in by the left fielder. Yeah, I'd put a good swing on that baseball, and if that thing maybe tails off a little bit more towards right center, we're looking at extra bases. But it hung up long enough, and uh, Carson continuing to deal here, deal here early. Now it's going to be Taylor Hopkins, 5'11", 190-pound freshman. Plays at William Woods. He's from Jefferson City, right-hander across the board. As first offering from Carson, he's going to lift that one a mile in the air. Coming in on it is the right fielder, also going out as a second baseman who will glove for out number three. So in the inning, they were three up and three down. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. We will go to the bottom of the third, still scoreless, as you're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Since 2018, Han Custom Laser Engraving LLC has been specializing in all things custom, using large format, high powered lasers. With some of the most advanced technologies on the market, anything can become a canvas. The state of the art system makes quick work of custom engraving on cups, glass, tile, wood, acrylic, metal, headstones with endless possibilities. They also offer custom one of a kind signs that are sure to make your design stand out. Find them on Facebook at Han Custom Laser Engraving or call 573 489 8732 to find out more on Custom Laser Engraving, LLC, a veteran-owned business. Hi, I'm retired Army Sergeant Trent Dirks, and I want to tell you about an organization that saved and changed my life forever. Retrieving Freedom provides highly trained service dogs to veterans with disabilities and children with autism absolutely free of charge, thanks to the generous donations and support from people just like you. Experts from Retrieving Freedom help throughout the entire process from fostering programs through service dog placement. Retrieving Freedom gave me the skilled service dog, Tracer, who has been my best friend in my lifeline. To find out more about how you can get involved, volunteer, foster, or to donate, visit their website, retrievingfreedom.org. Retrieving Freedom, changing lives through the training and placement of service dogs for veterans with disabilities and children with autism. We go here to the bottom of the third inning. It'll be batters 8, 9, and 1 due up. Carter Gorling still on the mound entering his third inning here as this will be designated hitter Cade Shoup. Left-handed batter, first pitch to him. Misses low, ball 1. 
Well, Gorling had barely any time to sit down and breathe in between innings as Renegade saw just five pitches at the plate. Hopefully Gorling's back out here strong again. That one missed just low for ball two, so that'll put Shoop ahead in the count of two balls and no strikes. Shoop's going to make you work and make Gorling throw strikes on base over 489, one of the best in the league. That one's going to be fouled off. Imgarten's going to give chase from that third base side. He's still giving hustle, and he will make the grab for out number one. Yeah, thank you very much to Dayfield for that one as that's look over and behind the Bombers dugout, and Imgarten with good speed to track it down and make the catch, and he'll take that, but uh, that, that pitch is in the stand pretty much anywhere else across the Mink League. Yeah, I don't have enough space to uh, diagram that out on my score sheet here of exactly where it was on the field. Now it's to be shortstop Adam Webb stepping in, his first at bat here. First offering from Gorling. That just on the outside part of the plate pumps out of Deal's glove for ball one. Well, Gorling's off-speed stuff looks to have some pretty good movement on it tonight. Except although that wasn't a strike, it looked to start on the outside corner and then bend out of the zone. And a lot of times that's a pitch that'll get swings and misses. That one in there called strike one. So we go even at one ball, one strike. Well, Gorling so far continue to attack the zone. Only just one walk through the first nine. Yeah, it's three strikeouts so far as well. That one just inside, so that makes it two balls and one strike. Hopefully you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. 7.40 here on the Show Me Sports Network. Blake Gasaway and Ben Schmidt here from the Dock and Norm Direct broadcast booth. That one in there called strike two. So now we're even at two balls, two strikes. Tell you what, if this game pitcher's duel continues like it has, we're going to be through this one by about 8.45. Well, I think both these two teams have matched up for quite a few extra inning affairs, so I don't think anybody's going to complain too much. That one's fouled straight back. So we'll still stay at two balls, two strikes. Ends up right in front of me, but my arm's not small enough to reach through the fence there to grab it. Well, Goring went three balls to three out of the first four hitters, and ever since he's been ahead or at least even and been attacking the strike zone. 2-2 two -two pitch on its way. That one upstairs, so now we're full. Should not three have said, balls, two strikes. Should not have said that when Goring still had one more or two more pitches to throw because now we're right back in a 3-2 count. So one out here and the bottom of the third still scoreless. There's going to be a ball that's going to be caught by Ott. They'll say that he didn't catch it. It bounced into his glove at second base. He'll glove and throw to first for out number two is that is going to go as a 4-3 put out. Yeah, Colby Ott makes that play look easy, slotting to his left. And you feel good about everyone on this Renegades infield. I mean, the glove work with Fuller and Ott on the right side, Hopkins and Imgarden on the left. Just about every play that's going to be made will be, and that's been the case so far tonight. So Caden Williams will step in here. First pitch to him, low ball one. So he'll be heading the count at 1-0. He did strike out his last time up. Well, Williams, just based on the slash line, like you're going to see him get on base at least once tonight. Hopefully, Gorling can not let it happen here. There's a big swing and a miss. Even the count, one ball, one strike. As Williams batting from the left-hand side of the plate after this season, he's got to retire those socks. He's got the Achilles heel ripped out of him. A 1-1 pitch on its way. That one upstairs. Well, the pitch that got the swing and a miss to Williams started at the knees and dove out of the zone and uh, made Williams swing over it. If Gorling has that work, and he'll continue to dominate. So 2-1 offering from Gorling on its way. That one downstairs and inside. Williams dances out of the way of it. It'll make it a 3-1 count. Again, two outs here as we play in the bottom of the third inning. Neither team has scored yet. As Hansen, he walked his last time up. He's the only base runner that either team has had. 3-1 pitch on its way. That one called strike two. Now we're full. Three balls, two strikes. Good work there by Gorling to nab the inside corner, especially after Williams started to dance out of the box. That can sometimes uh, trick the umpire into calling it inside, but Gorling gets the call there to make it 3 2. So Gorling looks in, payoff pitch. There's going to be a slow roller as Hopkins will glove from short. He'll throw on the run for out number three. So three up and three down goes as a 6 3 put out. And that will end the inning as we'll go to the fourth inning. It works still scoreless. You're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. We are State Tech. We are hands-on education. When you choose the number one two-year college in the country, you know you will be ready for your career. That's why at State Tech we say, from the classroom to your career, we are the employer's choice. We are. State Tech. 
Hello, Blake Gasway here with the Show Me Sports Network. I've had the opportunity to have some amazing calls, including overtime touchdowns, walk-off home runs, and buzzer-beating baskets. But I've answered another call. That's to serve my community as a volunteer firefighter. Stop and think what would happen if your home or property caught fire and no one was there to put it out. Every day, volunteer firefighters not only save lives and property, but also respond to other emergencies. Nearly two-thirds of our nation's fire departments are manned by volunteer firefighters. And because of this, we simply need more volunteers to step up and answer the call. Stop by or contact your local fire department and see how you can become a volunteer firefighter today. I answered the call to serve my community. Will you? We go to the top of the fourth inning. And still on the mound is Carson as he will see the top of the lineup. And Forte, Wagner, and Reether will be the three that are due up. Between those three, two strikeouts and a 5-3 put out. They were all retired 1-2-3 order. Hopefully some adjustments here for the Renegades. Second time through the order is Carson. Uh, was pretty dominant, no runs, no hits. And uh, four strikeouts first time through. So there's going to be a ball that's a bouncing ball to short. Glove throw to first in time for out. Number one as Forte is retired for the out number one. Well, that's three straight batters against the pitcher Carson who have made outs on the first pitch. And although a couple of them have made good contact, the flout by Ott last inning was hit well, and even that grounder by Forte was hit well. But at this rate, Carter Gorling's barely going to have enough time to get a sip of water in between innings the way the Renegades are being put down. So Cole Wagner will step in. He's 0 for 1 so far. He hit into that 5-3 put out in the top of the first inning. Carson gets the sign, his first delivery. That one outside and low, ball one. Well, you can count on Wagner to take a couple pitches because uh, on base over 433 and over 20 walks on the season gets ball one here. 1-0 offering on its way. That one bounces across home plate, so that'll make it two balls and no strikes. Tommy Reether in the on-deck circle for the Renegades. Neither team has scored yet. Neither team has had a hit. Just one walked batter. That's all we've had. That one upstairs. That makes it 3-0. Wagner takes a walk here. That means both teams have walked a batter. I would guess Wagner's not going to be swinging here 3-0, but I could be wrong. 3-0 offering on its way. Yep. That one in there for called strike one, so we'll stay... At three balls and one strike. At least from our view, that one looked to be center cut, so pretty you know, pretty much no inclination Wagner is going to swing there. That one's going to miss, so Wagner will take a five-pitch walk. So he will jog on down to first base. So, so far, no hits, but two walked batters, one for each side. Well, at least we can uh, say goodbye to the Perfecto in this one a little bit earlier than we did last week when it was through six, this time through three and a third. And... Hopefully this can start to turn the tide for the Renegades. All it took was one single last week. Maybe tonight all it's going to take is one walk. So one out here, runner on first base, Tommy Reether. Chokes up on the bat a little bit. First swing is a miss for strike one. Wagner not getting a huge lead off over there at first. Baker holding on in the left-handed pitcher. Carson staring right at him, so I wouldn't expect to see Wagner do a whole lot. Also see Tommy kick that foot out a little bit. He's just looking for a little dinger here. Carson will look at first, now one delivery. There's going to be a ball that's lifted into center field. And going over is the left fielder, actually. He'll make the grab for out number two. Yeah, solid approach there by Reether. Went down to get that one, tried to drive it to left field, but it gets underneath it, and uh, more than enough time for Schmidt to come in. And now up to Manchek's Renegade still looking for their first hit. Well, shows a little bit about that wind, as I said. It started towards center, but ended up in shallow Left center field, wind pushed it over. So Carson will look in. He'll drop that arm down. Now he'll look at first base. He is facing Matishak here. He'll step to first, back safely as Wagner. Matishak in that first at bat had the line out to short that he hit pretty well, but Webb was able to move a couple steps to his right and catch it on the fly. If Matishak puts good enough contact like that again, may have a chance to find a hole. Oh, one offering here to Matishak. Long look at first, second look in, 0-1 oh, pitch. Sorry, it is, makes it a 1-0 pitch. A little slow run in the scoreboard tonight. That should be one ball, no strike count. Carson looks back in again, two outs on the board as well. 
Runner on first base. Carson's next delivery. Matashak's going to hit a long fly ball to right field. Going back on it. And it is over the wall. Two run home run to right field. Puts the Renegades on top by a score of two to nothing as Matashak sends another long ball over the fence. In less than a week's time, he's had two home runs. Well, how about that? None in the first two months and essentially of the season and now two in the last four games, two in the last three games actually, four days total. And he smoked that baseball, turn on it from Carson, sent it out to right field. There was little doubt when that one was headed off the bat. Man, did he crush that baseball. He just annihilates that ball as it is a two-run home run that empties the base path and gives the Renegades a lead as now this will be Luke Fuller stepping in. First pitch to him upstairs, ball one. Yeah, that's one way to get your first hit. I'm sure the Renegades and Carter Goring will be heading back out on defense with some uh, inspired confidence. Well, Matishak picking up confidence as well. There's going to be a bouncing ball. Diving stop by this shortstop. Luke Fuller's going to rake it out. So a two-out single as Fuller legs that out, follows a home run by an infield single. All good back-to-back -back at bats for the Renegades. That one almost made its way into left. Webb is sliding stop, but that was just going to take a ton of arm to get it over there to first, and Fuller able to leg it out. And uh, now a two-out base runner for the Renegades, despite the day field scoreboard saying just one out. Well, the Renegades getting a little something going. As you said, two outs here on the scoreboard. I'm 100% sure. Two outs on the – well, there's one out on the scoreboard, but it should be two outs as – Two runs on two hits. First pitch to deal upstairs, ball one. Again, two outs here. Forte hit into a 6-3 out. Wagner took a walk, and then Reether popped out to left field. As deal will be ahead in the count at one ball and no strikes. Again, Renegades have a 2 to nothing lead. Two runs on two hits. Two walked batters, one for each team. Probably not a bad call here for the Bombers to go out and have a discussion with Carson. He was starting to lose it a little bit. Gave up the crush ball to Matishak. The pretty well hit infield single by Fuller. Now falling behind 1-0 to deal after not allowing a base runner through the first 10. Uh, just a slight blip on the Raider, but based on the stuff he's had so far, Carson you would think will be able to get back into it, but hopefully not for the Renegades' sake. Well, to show you how well that ball was hit, too, the wind's blowing right to left, almost maybe coming in a little bit, and that went to where the wind is originating. 1-0 pitch. That one swung on and missed. That'll leave in the count at one ball and one strike. Yeah, I think on a hot summer night off the bat, that one, it, there was a little bit of a question for us here, but on a hot summer night, I think that Matashek blast is well over any right field wall. One ball, one strike count. Again, Carson looking at first base. That's Luke Fuller, two outs on the board. That pitch, that one's going to be cue balled foul down the third base line. It'll get into the uh, hitting cage. So Deal will be down in the count, one ball, two strike, although that is a pretty good idea there. If he could hook one into the corner, that would be extra bases. I don't think Fuller would score from first, but it would be some extra bases. So Carson will look at first, now look home back to first. Now back home. Now back to first, back home. One-two pitch. That one misses everybody, so Fuller's going to scamper down to second base on the wild pitch. Yeah, that's huge because now, I mean, potentially depending on where it's hit, Deal could potentially give the Renegades their third run of the game with a base hit here. Obviously, from first, you're not scoring on just a single, but uh, I would assume that'll go down as a pass ball because I think the catcher, Poland, got his glove in it, although maybe wild pitch. Regardless, uh, big difference now with the runner in scoring position. So two ball, two strike count. Getting two outs here. Andrew M. Garten in the on-deck circle for the Renegades. Carson looks back at second, 2-2 pitch. That one bounces over everybody. So now at third base will be Fuller. He's making his way around the base path even quickly big, here. Even bigger now because one more pitch like that, and Fuller's coming to the plate. Two pitches bounced and easily go to the backstop. Carpenter, excuse me, not Carpenter, Carson is really starting to lose a little bit with the command, and now he's going to have to throw a strike and a 3-2 count to deal. The Renegades have a 2 to nothing lead. They're looking to add more to this. Again, you know what? The magic answer, two outs on the board. They've scored two runs now with two outs. Payoff pitch, swung on and missed for out number three. So deal is retired. However, the Renegades were able to put up a couple of runs on two hits. No errors and one left on the base path. As we will take a quick break and be back as you're listening to exclusive coverage Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. 
creating custom, handcrafted woodworking projects has never been easier. Become a member of Sawdust Studios and enjoy 24-7 access to a woodworker's paradise. Outfit with industry-leading professional-grade tools, Sawdust Studios offers endless woodworking possibilities. Don't have woodworking experience? No problem, as Sawdust Studios offers affordable classes from a community of woodworkers, experienced designers, and master craftsmen. Youth classes are also offered for those junior woodworkers. For more information, search Sawdust Studios on Facebook or find them online at sawdust247.com. Sawdust Studios, your community wood shop. Riverhill Christian Academy has been providing a strong biblical foundation and academic excellence within a Christian environment to students for more than 16 years. Located in the Jefferson City, Riverhill Christian Academy offers kinder prep through 7th grade with 8th grade to be added in the 2023-2024 school year. Riverhill Christian Academy's primary goal is the discipleship of the next generation to impact the world for Christ. Average class sizes are just 16 students with a student body composed of families from over 30 area churches. Kinder prep offerings include 3 and 5 full day sessions with kindergarten offering a half day and full day programs. To find out more about Riverhill Christian Academy, Academy. Call them at 573-634-3983. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Renegades have a 2 to nothing lead here after Jack Matishak sends the ball over the right field fence and gives them a 2 to nothing lead. Also, only two hits in the game so far, both of those belonging to the Sorry, uh, yeah, two hits. Nope, there should be three hits. Nope, two, nope, two hits. Yep, walk. you're right, two hits in the game, both of them belonging to the Renegades. Well, hopefully Goring can continue to attack with the same sense of urgency because first time through the order, 10 hitters actually. He goes three strikeouts, just one walk and no hits. Now given a lead, it's obviously one of the tougher parts about being a starter, trying to come back out with that same sense of urgency, now pitching with the lead, and hopefully Goring can do it. First offering here in there for called strike one as he'll face Hanson, Baker, and McGinnis. Good news, too, as we track down that home run ball. So have a little souvenir. Well, my wife and daughter did when I say we. They tracked it down. So Jack will have a little souvenir from the game tonight. One ball, one strike count. Gorling ready, his next offering on its way. There's going to be a ball that's going to be ripped into right field off the glove of a diving ot. So it'll be a single. For Hansen. Well, Hansen continuing to just really hurt Renegades pitching in these last two games, this one and then the one last week here against the Renegades. Hansen has been on base six times and has not been, or actually has been retired once, but that was on a sack fly. Slavin, that was productive. Hansen really seeing the ball well out of these Renegades pitchers. So first base runner besides a walk, first one by way of a hit for the Bombers as Jake Baker steps in now here on the left-hand side of the plate. He uh, popped out to left field in his first at bat. That one misses low. That makes it ball one. Well, Goring able to get Baker out the first time up, but he is one tough out because on the season, Baker's hitting 337 with an on base at 524. And no, that's not in just like six at bats. That's at 89 at bats. So Baker, he's a real threat. 1 0 pitch. That one swung on and missed. That evens the count. One ball, one strike. And I saw the slash line for Baker before the game in the on-base over 500. That's one of those when you look at the stats because they're not ordered by at-bats, you think, okay, this guy's maybe seen 12 at-bats all season. But 89, I mean, that's consistent damage for a two-month span. So one ball, one strike count. Gorlino look in. Wynn continuing to pick up right to left. That one upstairs. That'll make it two balls and one strike. Again, as I said, wind blowing right to left. Now blowing in from center field, so... Blowing across to our Show Me Sports Network. I'll take this broadcast. any day, though. I'm, I'm feeling great right now. Two balls, one strike count. Next pitch, that one in the dirt. Deal does a nice job to get that. Need going to settle back in here, especially against this heart of the order for the Bombers. and Still a long way to go in this one, but especially the inning right after your offense got two hits and two runs, you'd feel good if going was able to lock back in here and keep the Bombers off the scoreboard. So three balls and one strike. They'll throw back to first base, back safely. He is Hanson after he had a leadoff single. Gorling again will turn around and look at first base. Now he'll look at home. Three balls, one strike to count here to Baker. Gorling will get set. 3-1 pitch on its way. There's going to be a ball that's cue-balled out of play down the third base line. That had a lot of lumber on it. 
but it goes foul. Well, this long, next pitch can go a long way in impacting both this inning and the ball game because if Goring's able to get a good at bat here, or a good batter in Baker out, you get yourself one out and leave the runner at first base. But if you put the first two on with nobody out and the cleanup hitter coming up, it gives some life into the Bombers who trail this one two to nothing. So three balls and two strikes. Again, Renegades lead by a score of two to nothing. Payoff pitch. That one swung and missed. Held on to by Deal for out number one. That's huge for Goring. Just coming right at Baker. Shows him the fastball 3-2 and dares him to hit it. And Baker late on it, swing and a miss. That's that's confidence you got to love out of your starter and really makes you think that Goring's a potential chance to go deep into this ballgame. So third baseman Braden McGinnis. He steps in. He's 0 for 1 with a strikeout. As we're just shy of 8 o'clock here on the Show Me Sports Network. Blake as we're here with you. That first pitch in there called strike one. Like as we joined by Ben Schmidt. Sorry, somebody was, was tweeting at me. Appreciate so. that. <laughs> Didn't uh, mean to leave you hanging. No, I, I appreciate that. Four strikeouts so far for Goring. One of those coming here against McGinnis. Hopefully able to pick up a second and make it number five. So one offering. That one missed inside. That'll leave in the count. And one ball and one strike. I know the Forte family's listening, as they always do, so... Ashley says hello. Ashley says hello to all of our listeners, too. 1-1 one, one pitch. There's going to be a ball hit right on the money to Hopkins. He'll make the grab for the out there as everybody hits the deck to give him a clear shot to first base. Back safely is Hanson. So two outs on the board as that that's was an easy play right there. That's it made those, it look easy. One I of should those say. baseballs where uh, if you're if, if everything's going your way, that turns you into an out because McGinnis put good wood on that, but right at Hopkins it goes down on me to make the catch. Even better though, a good fundamental play that Hopkins just didn't throw that ball back to first because his runner uh, Hanson was easily going to be back in there. But if you throw that, that could get airmailed and allow him to move into scoring position. That pitch misses outside ball one. I said an easy play, but really it just looks easy as uh, Hopkins doing a great job out there all season at shortstop. Makes it look like anybody could get out there and make that play. I think he deserves a gold glove if we gave those out. Might have to give out aluminum gloves. 1-0 pitch. That one, another well-hit ball right at Taylor Hopkins for out number three. That one has to catch it above his head, but two outs in a row. That one might deserve what's above aluminum. Yeah, a it's, copper glove. Yeah, it's <laughs> whatever it is. I mean, sometimes the ball will find you. And although Hopkins had to make a quick reaction on that one, it was it was scolded, and he makes the play for out number three. Well, in the inning, there were no runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. We will take a quick break and be back as you're listening to exclusive coverage Renegades baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Throughout the course of any game, different actions stand out to different people. But everyone remembers a walk-off, especially if it's a walk-off wood bat. Handcrafted right here in Missouri, walk-off wood bat company bats are made with premium grade maple, ash, and birch, fully customizable to make it truly yours. From the length and weight to the barrel and handle color, you're able to customize every feature of your wood bat, including personalized engraving with a 45-day warranty. In addition to selling custom handcrafted bats, they also offer a selection of bat accessories, including lizard skin bat grips and batting gloves. To help find your confidence at the plate, give walk-off wood Bat Company a call at 816-261-1014 or visit wowbats.com. Hi, this is Nick Hoslog, owner of Hoslog Landscape and Design. Every day, my highly trained team of experts works hard to give you the outdoor living area you've been dreaming of. By focusing solely on landscaping and hardscape construction, this has made us the preferred landscape and design company serving Jefferson City and the Central Missouri area. Thank you for all your continued support in voting us as winners of the Reader's Choice Awards and Jefferson City's Best multiple years running. When you are ready to begin your dream outdoor project, call us at 573-301-9464 to schedule an estimate or visit hoslaglandscape.com. A new pitcher in the ball game for the Bombers. And let me get the information pulled up here, unless you've got it pulled up, Ben. Oh, no, I'm getting there. I, I would just say, would not have guessed based on how the first three innings went for Chase Carson that he would have been out of this game after four. Goes nine up, nine down, but the fourth inning really got to him as he gave up the two hits and a walk. Two runs come in to score, and now gives way to a right-handed pitcher and Aaron Ferguson, and especially good for the Renegades that he's a right-hander with six out of the nine hitters in this lineup being lefties. Yeah, he's had eight appearances, has a two-and-one record, including... One save, has 21 full innings of work, a 1.29 ERA, has 38 strikeouts as well. 
As first batter he will face here is Andrew M. Garten as he steps in, does a little landscaping, but not much you can do here with this turf infield. Well, I said good for the Renegades. He's a right-hander, but based on the stats, uh, Renegades look like they're going to have their work cut out for him here. The first pitch will be down stairs, ball one. Also looks like Ferguson's got a pretty good heater too, although that one missed. Looked to have some good life on it. That one's going to be swung on. It was upstairs. Evens account one ball, one strike. Well, hopefully here for Imgarner struck out looking the first time just a little longer at bat, maybe a ball in play to lead off this inning. That one's going to be swung on and missed for strike two. Yeah, Ferguson very early, obviously just three pitches into an outing. I mean, he looks ready to go. He's he's essentially ready on the mound before Imgarner's back into the box. That one's going to be fouled back. So we'll still stay at one ball, two strikes. Mentioned this earlier, uh, one of the big things was score early, and although not really early, fourth inning, still a good time for the Renegades. Now the other key, add on and put pressure on the Bombers. That one's going to be swung on and missed for out number one. Yeah, you can't even blame Imgarn there because that was just good pitching by Ferguson. Fastball's up in the zone with some late life on it, and that's tough for, that's going to be tough for all of the hitters in this Renegades lineup to hit if that pitch is going to be there all night for Ferguson. So this will be... Next batter in Colby Ott. First pitch called strike one. So now he will step back in. That one just missed. It missed by much, but good eye there. That one's going to be hit in the air, and it's going to get out of the ballpark as nobody gives chase for that. Uh, well, Ott made good contact in his last at bat on the fly out to Schmidt out there in left center field. Hopefully now, if you're able to do that again, but just a little bit more tail action on it, that's extra bases. That one's going to be fouled back, so we'll do the one-two pitch again as Ott still stays at one and two. He just nicked that one. Yeah, I think you could tell me that that pitch was coming, and I still probably would have been late on it. I mean... Obviously don't know how fast that pitch is coming in, but looks like Ferguson's got a, a pretty good right arm and a pretty good fastball. So Ferguson will look back in. One, two delivery on its way. That one's going to be fouled down the third baseline, so we'll still stay at one ball and two strikes. Well, then you combat the fastball with that pitch coming on one, two. Uh, I would guess that was a curveball because it looked like it had good vertical movement and Ott fouls it off, but out in front because he pulled it to the third base side. If you're mixing and matching those, you're going to completely mess with the timing of hitters. The one ball, two pitch, one out. Next delivery, that one bounces across home plate. And they say he went around. However, he's going to be on his way to first base. He'll be there safely. That's the second time we've had a drunk third strike batter reach here in this ballpark in a week. Sometimes the backstop here can help you, and there for the Renegades, it helped them because even after Ott stood in the box waiting on the appeal, still plenty of time to reach. His Poland would have had to make an incredibly long throw on the money to Baker down there at first. And even though the Renegades have been struck out twice in this inning, they now have a base runner. So now to be one out on the board. Taylor Hopkins, a shortstop, stepping in. First delivery to him, swing and a miss for strike one. Well, in the bottom of the fourth, made some great plays on defense. Now let's see if he can keep that uh, momentum rolling into a good plate appearance here and help the Renegades add on to a 2 nothing lead. Throw back to first base, back safely as Ott. Boy, he popped up quickly there. Well, maybe a little bit bigger lead now for the Renegades with not having a lefty looking right at him. Well, Baker is holding Ott on, so not a huge one. Oh, one pitch. That ball's going to be fouled out of play. Again, nobody gives chase, so that means it's really foul. So he said this ballpark here, Dayfield at Liberty Park Stadium in Sedalia, very unique in that you can actually play a foul ball behind the dugouts. Don't see that uh, in any other ballpark in the Mink League. Oh, it's going. Runner's going to go to second. That one missed. The throw is there. He is under the tag, but they say he is out. Yeah, that's tough because I looked to have a really good jump there. I meant to say that he was going to go before the pitch was even thrown because he was dancing around so much. You could tell he was going. And Poulton had to make a perfect throw, and even that, it was still questionable. But a good throw and good tag down there at second base. Not much you can do when it's a bang-bang play like that, and it goes against the Renegades. It looked like he slid under the tag. That one's going to be fouled back, so we will do the one-two pitch again. 
Well, we had potential for a fourth strikeout inning, and it still could happen, but Renegades are going to have to have another drop third strike batter reach. Uh, now Hopkins is going to have to go to work here, one, two. Two outs, one, two pitch. That one fouled back, so we'll keep it at one, two. Still late, but slowly starting to get more and more bad on the ball here. We'll see if Hopkins can speed things up a little bit, but although you always got to be wary of that curveball coming. One, two pitch. That one gets outside, even at two balls, two strikes. Don't know if that was a curveball. It was certainly off speed that dipped out of the zone, and good, good uh, patience there by Hopkins. So 2-2 two -two delivery on its way. That one called strike three. So the backwards K recorded. That makes it three up and three down in the inning. There were no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base as Renegades have a 2 nothing lead. We'll take a quick break and be back. As you're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. The following public service announcement is brought to you by the Eddie Goodell Society, Jefferson City Chapter 10, doing little things to make a big difference. Want to make a big difference in your community? Be kind to others, drive safely, and put litter in its proper place. Join us in celebrating Eddie Goodell's historic Major League appearance as a member of the St. Louis Browns by doing something nice for someone today. Take the walk, Eddie! When things come out of left field, having a game plan matters. Farmers Insurance has over 90 years of experience helping people play through every stage of the game. We've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything. Talk to Farmers Agent Christopher Scott at 573-896-0131 to see how I can help you stay in the game. That's Christopher Scott at 573-896-0131. We are farmers. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. Underwritten by Farmers, Truck Fire Insurance, Exchanges, and Affiliates. Products not available in every state. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning now as the Renegades have a two to nothing lead. Two runs, two hits, no errors. No runs, one hit, and one air for the Bombers as this game playoff. Wild card contention as it'll be batters six, seven, and eight. We're joined this uh, inning by Renegades Board President, President, and uh, Dwayne Carty. Dwayne, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I know you're uh, you're a man of a uh, few words sometimes, but you uh, do a great job running the board and keeping us in line. First pitch is going to be upstairs to Polton. Gives them a little chin music for ball one. I'll make it. One ball, no strike here as Gorling continues in his fifth inning to work. As, uh, Dwayne, you've been a member of the board for a number of years. This year you're uh, president and doing a fine job at that. Thank you. We've got a good board that's working hard this year and like to thank all them for all their hard work all year. I think, though, we can say we have a lot of fun. Have we a lot definitely of work. do have a lot of fun. <laughs> have a lot of work, but have a lot of fun, too. So one one pitch on its way. That one just a bit inside, so we'll go two balls and one strike. We've got everybody dancing a little bit at the ballpark this year. That's right. Had new promotions this year. Had a lot of things to celebrate. 2-1 pitch. That one down central. Evens account, two balls, two strikes, as uh, we've been able to uh, get Rowdy the Renegade to come hang out with us some this summer. That was a big, uh, a big thing for the board to decide on to. Get a, to get a mascot, had our naming contest. That one in there called strike three, and Polton is retired with the backwards K. Yeah, we've been working for getting a mascot for a couple of years and finally got it arranged this year, and that was pretty exciting. I think all the fans like that. I think so. What's what's uh, So you've been a part of the organization for a number of years now. What's what's really been the best thing about this this season? I think the increased attendance and the fan enjoyment that, that we've seen this year has been pretty exciting. So Nick Schmidt steps in here, the left hitter. He sees the first pitch as strike one. As Gorley will get set, his 0-1 offering. That one misses outside, evens the count one and one. You know, one thing I don't think uh, that a lot of people realize or understand and being a board member myself is, you know, we take a little bit of time off, but really we work on this all year long. Yeah, we'll start having another meeting next in two weeks to yeah. start planning for next year. That ball is going to be caught in center field by Adonis Forte for out number two, as this will be designated hitter in Cade Shoop. Yeah, as we said, we get uh, we get a little time off, and uh, then we get right back to work. We wrap up 
how this year went and then start planning for the next year. And if anybody's interested in uh, joining, I mean, I can say without a doubt our board is very diverse. We have uh, different uh, – we everybody's from a different walk of life, but we all come together. Yeah, it works out pretty well. We get a lot of different ideas from different people. So one offering from Gorling will be headed to home. That one's going to be fouled off, so it'll be 0-2. And, and that's kind of the thing I've, I've seen from myself joining is, you know, we had a good foundation of the board, but really we've been able to throw out ideas and we kind of build on them and build on them and come up with something that's pretty dynamite at the end. Yeah, we all throw in ideas and then get it building Oh, that ball is going to go off the glove of Fuller. So that will put Shoop on first base. That goes down as an E3. So now this will be shortstop Adam Webb. But as you were saying, though, we, we kind of take some ideas and run with them and add to them and come out with a really good product on the other side. Yeah, I really like the Christmas and July theme that we just had at our last game, and we got some good decorations going for it, and everybody was, seemed to have fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We had our summer sales event, too, where we were giving away all kinds of things, fan appreciation, full house as well as that ball in the dirt. Doing a nice job of keeping it in front of him as deal, so it'll be a 2-0 count to Webb. You know, really, if you walked away from uh, from Friday's game without without something, then uh, I guess you weren't paying attention because fans got a lot of giveaways they got to go home with. Yeah, we tried to make sure a lot of fans got something to go home with after the ballpark. So 2-0 pitch, that one downstairs, that makes it 3-0. Well, if any of our listeners are interested in becoming a board member or helping out, uh, what what's the best thing for them to do? Yeah, just email us or Facebook message us. Uh, we're going to have um, Renegade Brigade where we're going to have some other supporters of people that can help do different things besides be on the board if you don't want to commit to the full-time commitment of a board member. So you can just come help us at different projects. Absolutely. Four-pitch walk issued there to Webb. We'll go back to the top of the lineup in Caden Williams. Yeah, there's a lot of things we do. We do a lot of public appearances, a lot of other things that – uh, we definitely need need help with, need all hands on deck. Many hands make for light work. And like I said, we have a lot of fun, but the more hands we have, the merrier. And uh, I know we participate in the Christmas parade and all kinds of other things that uh, we enjoy, but we appreciate any of the extra help we can get. Yeah, and the more ideas we can get for next year to help make it more exciting for all the fans. Well, there's going to be a ball hit into left center field. Wagner will track it down for out number three. That will take us. To the sixth inning of work. Dwayne, you want to stay on for another inning? I guess I can. All right, we're going to take a quick break and be back. Renegades lead by a score of two to nothing. As we'll pause and be back, you're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. At the Boone County Journal, we're with you all the way. We know that you're more than just a subscriber. You're an employer. You're a parent. You're a neighbor. Most importantly, you're a community member. It's our goal to provide you with the latest news, sports, opinions, obituaries, classifieds, and more to keep you informed about your community. To find out more about the Boone County Journal or to subscribe, call 573-657-2334 or visit bocojo.com. The Boone County Journal. We're with you all the way. Last Sentinel Firearms is your federally licensed and registered Type 7 FFL manufacturer dealer in Missouri, providing quality products to all types of sports enthusiasts, law enforcement, and individuals across the nation. Orders are currently being fulfilled offering custom-built pistols and rifles from the AR platform made right here in Missouri. Visit their website at lastsentinelfirearms.com or call them at 417-684-7202 to find out what they've got for you. Last Sentinel Firearms, you are your last line of defense. We go to the uh, top of the sixth inning here as the Renegades have a two to nothing lead so far. That uh, two run home run by Jack Matishak has been the difference maker here. As this will be uh, batters one, two, and three. This will be Forte, Wagner, and Reether step in. First pitch to Forte, fouled off. He'll be down on the count at 0-1. Joined here uh, for another inning, or at least another half inning, by 
the Renegades board president and Dwayne Carty. And so we said, Dwayne, we have a lot of fun, a lot of work, and always open to ideas and always open to help. Oh, one pitch, that one swung on and missed. That'll make it 0-2. But we have some other opportunities. Uh, it is a big commitment to serve on the board, but there are some other ways that uh, our fans can help out. We'll talk about that in a minute. That one's going to be fouled off towards first base, so it'll still stay 0-2. Uh, we've got uh, opportunities to uh, help out at the ballpark, have some fun. We take ideas. Also, uh, another thing is we try to feed the players after the games, and that's something that uh, we would love for anybody to donate a meal or offer to help with that? Is that something that sometimes we just run out of hands to make it happen? Yeah, especially when we have three or four home games right in a row, it gets tough for the board members to make all the meals. So it'd be great if we had some other people helping out on that area. Yeah, we try our best, but sometimes we just it just gets to be, especially all the extra inning games we've had this season, as that one's going to be just inside. Going to make it one ball and two strikes. Like I said, we've had more, I think, extra inning games this season than, than uh, probably ever in the history of the Renegades, or so it feels. But uh, like we said, had some new things. I think my favorite thing so far is the Hey Baby dance. That one misses low. It'll even at two balls, two strikes. Yeah, the Hey Baby dance has been a hit among the players and the fans as well. Yeah, we enjoy our time. Even if you're not a good dancer, still come out and have some fun. That one low, so we'll go full. I'll admit I'm not a dancer either, but uh, but I enjoy getting up and doing it even even while we're on the broadcast. We'll get up and do it. Also, our military salute, that's been a big thing that uh, we've changed this year. That one's going to be fouled back, so we'll stay at two at uh, full three balls and two strikes. We've always done the military salute, but this year we changed it up a little bit. Both teams come out of the dugout. In the last several games, we've taken the mic around and given our veterans or active military a chance to uh, just talk to talk about their service. So that's going to be ball four. So Forte issued a leadoff walk. Is now going to be left fielder and Cole Wagner. And uh, you know, I really think that's an important thing. One to give them a chance to uh, you know uh, be recognized, but obviously give them an opportunity to to talk about their service and uh, gives them a moment where we're only focused on them and thanking them for their service. Yeah, it's a really nice way to thank them individually for their service. Wagner's going to show Bunt. He'll lay down the third base line. It's going to trickle foul. Boy, it hit that brown colored turf over there and put a left turn signal on and goes foul. I think if that stays fair, he might be on first base with a Bunt single. Yeah, that would have been a good play. Wagner will walk back to home plate. So our board member, or our board meetings rather, are the first, first Wednesday, Wednesday of the month. So that means we. Uh, well, we get a week off. Yeah, we get a week off after the playoff week, and then we'll then we're back, back at, at it. <laughs> like I said, no rest for the weary. We stay at it. Throw back to first base. Back safely is Forte. Again, no outs here. Wagner down in the count at 0-1. Yeah, we'll be getting planning going on our student of the month again that we'll be going again with the Jeff City Public Schools and some other school districts this year too. 0-1 pitch, that one upstairs, so that'll even it a 1-1. One one. Yeah, that's something new that we did this year. and This year's rendition is going to look a little bit different. Basically, we're going to open it up to more of the schools and uh, make it uh, more across the board of the throwback. Back safely is Forte. That's, uh, that's a partnership we have with the Jefferson City Public School District Foundation and glad to be partnered with them. Have some other things we're trying to plan for the future as well. We like to help them out where we can. 1-1 one, one pitch, that one in there called strike two. Also, we're always looking for host families. That is something that's a great time in the summer to be a host family. You get to host one of our players, get a, a bonus kid. If you have kiddos, they get a uh, you know, an older brother who plays a little baseball and rather good at baseball. That one swung on and missed for out number one. Yeah, once you're a host family, then you're they're part of your family forever. Some of the ones that have been families a couple of three years ago, they're still following their players as they continue on. Stepping in here, this is Tommy Reether. He's one out on the board. Forte on first base. And he's going to foul that one back, so he will be down on the count at 0-1. His team does lead by a score of 2 to nothing. And I talked about that uh, at previous different times about growing up in Nevada and you know, knowing some of the host families there and you host a, a player and then you go in the summertime 
or see them in the summertime, of course, but then go in, in the uh, fall if they play fall ball and in the spring to cheer them on wherever they're at in their college. And it's always a lot of fun as that ball swung on and missed for strike two. But uh, you get to see them and just builds a bond that uh, – is, is a lot of fun. Plus, like I said, if you have kiddos, they get a chance to have, you know, some one-on-one time with a, with a Renegades player, with a collegiate player, and, and learn a thing or two. And any time that uh, knowledge can be exchanged, that's always a great day. Yeah, it's great when they, the players go to the little kids' baseball games and help them out and teach them the proper techniques and stuff. Right, just work with them. Sometimes it's, you know, it's not like they're reinventing the wheel. It's just working with them and playing a little catch, having some fun with them. Um, I know in the past it's even uh, breaking in their glove. You know, a kid gets a, a new glove over the summer, and it's uh, them helping break in the glove, throwing a whole lot of pitches, and uh, just, you know, getting them a chance to, to get out and, and have some fun out in the yard playing a little catch. And then you get to come cheer on your Renegades player that you're hosting, of course, at all the, uh, the games throughout the season as well. And uh, then, of course, sponsorship. That's always the thing that uh, um, we, uh, you know, we're a nonprofit, so we rely on the support of our sponsors and our fans and everybody like that. And that's something that uh, without our sponsor support, we definitely could not do what we get to do and have the fun that we get to have. Yeah, we definitely spend a lot more money than people think on the transportation and umpire fees and different things like that throughout the year. So we definitely need lots of money to keep the team going yeah, I think, you know, that that's, that is that is an understatement sometimes that people don't understand exactly how much it costs. But I can tell you when when uh, diesel is 5 and $6 a gallon, it adds up rather quickly. And so uh, making these road trips and doing these things, it uh, it it is just all you hear is cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. But uh, we're out here, you know, we have fun, we, we enjoy it, and we, uh, we love our sponsors and Happy to have all them on board, of course. Always have the opportunity to add additional sponsors in. And uh, it's something, too, this year that, that we've uh, we've worked hard on is coming up with some new uh, some new ways to highlight some of those sponsors. And I think we're going to have even some more on board for next year in some different ways that we can highlight what they're doing. And so if that's something that uh, you would be interested in, you can also contact us and we can work out something. I mean, we've spent a lot of time, yourself and, and me, putting together some custom packages for, for uh different businesses so that's something that uh, we'd be more than happy to sit down and put something out to really make you stand out from the crowd and you know have fun that that's the most important thing we, we keep talking about that and we put way too much work and minus tonight it's way too hot to spend at the ballpark all summer and not have fun yeah this weather tonight is a lot different than it was saturday in chillicothe that's yeah, it's, for sure it's like 40 degrees difference from when we played uh, a week or two weeks ago it's it's changed that much and there's probably a lot of other stuff, too, that we're not thinking of. That uh, Yeah, I think the one thing that really we got going this year is the after Friday night and Saturday night, kids running the bases and getting autographs from the players. The players at first were like, autographs? But then after the guys come out there and they all start signing and having a great time and taking photos with all those players, young little leaguers and running the bases running the bases we did the kids club that's something uh we we've had a kids club before but it it uh it needed a a break it needed a little time out and we brought that back so that's uh something that we're you know building towards the future to get the uh the youngsters plugged into what we're doing for renegades i know they got a uh, autograph picture of rowdy a nice little letter that he'd written some other things so looks like we're about ready though to get baseball underway here after the a timeout, a ball hit Poulton in the groin, so he needed a time to gather himself. So two pitch is fouled off, so Reether will be still down in the count at 0-2. But like we said, we we enjoy it, we have fun, and we'd love to have, I mean, if you're interested in participating in any way, we can find a way to get you plugged into the organization. As 0-2 count, one out, runner on first base, that's Forte. Pitch is upstairs and outside. I think that's you know kind of the blanket statement, but if anybody is interested to any degree, we can find a way to plug you in and uh, get you involved in the organization and all the fun we have in the summer and then throughout the uh, rest of the year too. We do a lot of other things. One, two pitch. There's going to be a ball that's caught on the fly, but it did one hop as it goes to third to first for out number two. That'll be uh, moving the base runner on Forte to second base. Yeah, we're going to be rescheduling our golf tournament for October 14th 
also. So go ahead and mark your calendars for that. Yeah, that's always a lot of fun. I'm not a big golfer, but that'll be something I'll be coming out to and having some fun as Mattishak steps in now. As first pitch to him way upstairs, well, I guess that's what you do, even though this pitcher wasn't the one that gave up the home run. As Ferguson still on the mound here, that was the uh, starter and Carson, but you throw it out of the strike zone, way out of the strike zone. As 1-0 offering, that one down central called strike one, even at 1-1. One one. You know, we've got the golf tournament, then before long we'll start the year over and be looking at uh, – uh, looking at the uh, maybe trivia a spring night. golf tournament, a trivia night in the spring. That's our annual event there. We have a lot of fun at that pitch upstairs and outside. For us, that's kind of maybe the official kickoff for things happening for the next season and yeah. get to show how smart you are or how not smart you are. Or how good you are at preparing <laughs> snacks. I think uh, that's, that's true. the main thing about a trivia night. Really. That is very true. Forte dancing at second. That foul. Ball is going to be fouled off as Forte was headed to third but has to hold up. So it'll be even at two balls, two strikes. Yeah, I, I know uh, we as a board definitely need to step up our game and bring in some snacks for ourselves. Like, I'm not just talking about having chips and uh, some pizza. They People were bringing hors d'oeuvres and preparing stuff. and Full course meals. It was, it was great. So Forte will dance back to second as Ferguson steps off. But, yeah, maybe uh, we're talking about some other things we may do even earlier than that or maybe around the same time, just depends. But it's one good thing. You need to like our Facebook page. Just search for Jeff City Renegades. That one's going to hit Mattishak. So coming to third and putting the brakes on is is uh, Forte. That, that might have been a good idea right there. Yeah, that was a good whoa up. Yeah, he was thinking about it. He's got the speed too, but... I guess they say that that they marked it as a ball, but I know that hit something on. I think it was just the catcher's glove. It maybe. hit the top of his glove and went over the umpire. Payoff pitch, that one outstairs. So a full count walk issue to Mattishak. Again, the magic working. Two outs here on the board. They've got a little something cooking. Now this is Luke Fuller. He had a uh, single in his last at bat. Sorry, not a single. He reached on the air. So now runners on the corners with two outs here. Fuller can put a ball in play. It'll score another run. Renegades lead two to nothing. That one's going to be called strike one. So he'll be down in the count at 0-1. Yeah, in October, November, we'll have the Mink League meeting where we meet with all the other teams and develop the schedules for next year. That one upstairs evens one and one. I know one thing that uh, we talked about as a board this year, we wanna, we're going to work extra hard, not that we've not worked extra hard before, but work extra hard on getting our schedule and our promotion out so everybody knows what we're doing. As we had promotions, multiple promotions every night this, this uh, season, that one called strike two on the inside part of the plate. We had something every night this week, uh, every night of the week that we played at home, which was great. And had some other special things we threw in as well. So we want to continue those and maybe add to what we're doing as well. One-two pitch on its way. That ball's going to be hit in the air as it'll go foul first baseman coming over. And foul territory deep in a foul, ter foul territory will make the grab for out number three. So the Renegades leave a couple stranded on the base path. We're unable to get any runs put on the board. Appreciate you joining us, Dwayne. Any final thoughts before you get out of here? I just want to thank everyone that came out and supported us this year and look forward to seeing us hopefully later in the week. And if not, we'll be back next spring for you. Well, that's Dwayne Carty, the president for the uh, board for the Jefferson City Renegades. We're going to take a quick break and be back as you're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Serving the capital city and the surrounding area for 70 years, Animal Medical Center strives to provide the best possible medical service for your pet in a caring atmosphere. To promote quality healing and preventative care in a fear-free environment, Animal Medical Center of Jefferson City is a full-service veterinary hospital. Whether your pet has fur, feathers, or scales, Dr. Greg Boyer and Dr. Kayla Terry have the experience and expertise to treat complex medical conditions as well as providing annual well checks and vaccinations. Animal Medical Center of Jefferson City is the only veterinary hospital in the capital city accredited by the American American Animal Hospital Association. To schedule an appointment, call the team at Animal Medical Center of Jefferson City at 573-636-4626. 
running out of some of your favorite Avon products and haven't seen an Avon brochure in quite some time? No need to worry. Avon Independent Sales Representative Michelle Carty can help with your skin so soft, makeup, jewelry, fragrance, and skin care needs. Avon now carries cleaning supplies, clothing, daily essentials, and several small LG electronic items. You now have the opportunity to shop online 24-7 and have your order shipped directly to your front door by shopping with Michelle at mcarty.avonrepresentative.com. Dot com or find her on Facebook by searching Avon Carty. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Renegades still leading by a score of two to nothing as it'll be batters two, three, and four due up. This will be Anthony Hansen. First pitch to him misses outside as Gorling still on the mound for the Renegades. Doesn't appear like there's much work in the bullpen or any work in the bullpen right now for the Renegades. No reason to at this point. That ball's going to be lifted high in the air as going back on it is Hopkins coming in on it, making the grab is Wagner as Hopkins bails out of the way, does a nice little somersault for out number one. Yeah, that's good work there by uh, Wagner to call off Hopkins who would have had to make an over-the-shoulder catch. And it's just nice to finally get Hanson out. Was on base twice already tonight. And uh, this is going to be a big inning for Goring. Potentially get through six scorers with the lead if he can do it. And don't necessarily know who we'd see in the bullpen is now there's a little bit of throwing going. And if that's Braden Boyer, yep, it is. I mean, if you have the chance to go straight from Goring to Boyer to win this ballgame, you've got to feel... We got to feel pretty good, but you'd love to see Gorling get through the six right here. Absolutely. I'd like to see him go as far as he can to save as many arms as he can. So first pitch to Baker in there called strike one. Baker struck out his last time up. Interesting decision to warm Boyer up right here, but I do understand because with just a 2 nothing game, things can unravel in a hurry. And I think a warm-up pitch from that bullpen came onto the field just a moment ago. Look forward to go over and get it. Yeah, it's not a uh, it's not a fast warm-up by any means. Uh, yeah. It's just, just kind of a slow one, but he is uh, starting the uh, process to get warmed up. As 0-1 offering on its way, that one in there for ball one. Well, Renegade has been fortunate enough going, I guess specifically he's been fortunate enough to retire Baker twice already tonight. That's not easy to do, and let's see if he can turn him into 0 for 3. 1-1 so one, one pitch. That one is for sure called strike two. So now it'll be one ball, two strike. I'm just so impressed with Goring's just willingness to attack the zone. To the first five and a third, only two walks allowed and just the one hit. I mean, even when he falls behind, he comes right back with a pitch in. They're almost daring the Bombers to swing. 1-2 so pitch. That one missed about the same place as ball one did. So it evens at two and two. Yeah, Goring, even when he misses, they're close misses because that ball just missed nabbing the low outside part of the zone against the lefty Baker, and you, you have to like that pitch location more often than not. That one just misses, so now we're full of three balls and two strikes. I mean, these have been on the outside corners, but so far in this at bat, not going the way of Goring, I guess he's going to have to give Baker a pitch to hit right here. He's done it before, so not afraid to. Did it in a 3-2 cow last time he was up. Gordley looks in, 3-2 pitch on its way. That one inside. So one out walk issued to Baker. Do you have an update from Clarinda as the Des Moines Peak Prospects playing at Clarinda? It is the bottom of the fifth, so they're almost out of the inning. It is 2-1, to one, Des Moines leading over Clarinda at the moment. Not a whole lot of runs being scored in the two games tonight. Looks like, I mean, makes sense with the uh, one-game wild card winner go home. Aces in pretty much all four teams why we'd see so much low scoring, but uh, we'll see if the offense kicks it up a notch late. So one out here, runner on first base. First pitch to the new batter, that is McGinnis, is low ball one. Well, going at least in the last two batters, hasn't been able to land that off-speed pitch right where he wants it, not missing by a whole lot, but also not getting the called strikes. So one ball, no strike count, one out here, runner on first, that one bit inside, so we'll go 2-0. Oh. Well, here against the three and four batters, a little bit of loss of command. Would not be shocked if, if Goring can't come back here against McGinnis to potentially see a mound visit. So 2-0 oh count as Gordling looks in. Here the freight train going by. That pitch is going to be fouled towards the dugout of the Bombers. That'll make it two balls and one strike. By the way, here Sedalia at Day Field for the uh, playoffs. They're doing dollar dog night. I uh, highly approved, took full advantage of that while you were interviewing Dwayne during the last inning. 
Hey, I told you sometimes it's it's pretty nice to do uh, to do color and have some yeah, special I w- guests. You get a chance to go grab a bite to eat. I, I wasn't planning on it, and then I on, on my way back there realized that it was just a dollar, and I took full advantage of it. They're not too bad hot dogs either. No, I had one before the game started. Very much approved. Again, wind picking up right to left on your Show Me Sports Network app or Media Center, however you're choosing to listen. 2-1 pitch. That one missed just low and outside. So now we're three balls and one strike count. Again, the uh, sunlight disappearing very quickly. A cloud-covered sky, but still had some daylight. It has quickly vanished here. Runner on first base, that's Baker. He is held on there by Fuller. 3-1 pitch, a bouncing ball. is going to be fielded by M. Garten. He'll throw to first. They say foul ball. It wasn't foul by much, and thankfully for, I guess, the Bombers, it was foul because otherwise M. Garten would have thrown out McGinnis up the line. But now makes it 3-2, and... As this freight train passes, hopefully it, it's going to symbolize Goring coming in right here and uh, attacking this hitter, McGinnis, for out number two. So our count is full at three balls and two strikes. Again, Renegades lead by a score of two to nothing. We're just shy of 840 here on the Show Me Sports Network. Blake Gasway here with you, by joined by Ben Schmidt from the Dock and Norm Direct broadcast booth here at Liberty Park Stadium at Dayfield in Sedalia, Missouri. Bombers and Renegades matched up here in wild card baseball. Payoff pitch on its way. That ball is going to be hit into right field. Coming in on it he is a right fielder. Ever it will be grabbed. Trying to watch what it was. Long run in by Odd, and he makes the grab for out number two. Baker has to go back to first base. Yeah, that was a long run for both Reether coming in and Ott going out, and thankfully just one of them able to make the catch in Ott. And otherwise, if that bloops in, you're looking at first and second. And with the catch being made, Baker has to go back to first. A good bounce back there by Gorling. Yeah, we can't see. We're blocked by the players there at the top of the dugout, but I saw Baker go diving back in. That's a pretty good indication yep. that the ball was caught. This will be right fielder Zach Dillman stepping in. Two outs on the board, first pitch. Downstairs, ball one. If you'd have told me coming into this game that through the first five and two-thirds innings, Carter Goring would be throwing one-hit shutout baseball, I'd tell you I'd feel very good about the Renegades' chances. Now just need to add some more runs on offense. He's had five strikeouts, a couple of walks, three walks to be exact. 1-0 pitch. That one's fouled off, so we'll go one ball, one strike count. Well, Dimmitt smoked a baseball in his last time up, but thankfully for the Renegades, it was right at the shortstop, Taylor Hopkins. If that gets over Hopkins' head, that's headed for left center field in the gap. And another base hit like that could potentially get the Bombers on the board if it rolls far enough for Baker to score from first. So one ball, one strike count. Gorling's next delivery. That one's going to be hit off the handle of the bat. It's going to get way out of place, so that'll make a one ball, two strike count. Again, winner here matches up tomorrow night at Joplin. That'll be the divisional round. Important to know that the Renegades went 5-3 and three against Joplin in the regular season, took the last two to win the season series. So one ball, two strike count. Gorling's next delivery. That one in there called strike three, and three outs are recorded. Carter Gorling, man, is just absolutely dealing the slow walk off the mound. I'm sure he's feeling great right now, and... Uh, no reason for me to believe that he can't keep pitching with the way he is just lighting up the strike zone here tonight. So that leaves the runner stranded after he gives up the one-out walk. So that'll take us to the seventh inning to work. As the Renegades still lead by a score of two to nothing, you're listening to exclusive coverage. Renegades baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. At Centurion Cares, for more than three decades, their focus has been on exceeding customer expectations for contact center software solutions. Their innovative communication solutions include utility interactive voice response software that allows for smart communication features that let your utility deliver superior customer service 24-7. They also provide other streamlined services like automatic call distribution, automated customer callback, reporting, and quality assurance. To find out more about how Centurion Cares can help your business, call them at 727-421. 5300 or look them up online at centurioncares.com centurion cares innovative communication solutions moex dock and norm direct is back better than ever much more than your number one ground shuttle transportation service to st louis airport yes moex dock and norm direct is mid missouri's leader in premier group travel sporting events concerts wedding receptions the lake winery trips branson plaza shopping reunions pub crawls group sizes from 1 to 100 or beyond, we do it all. Remember, we want you to ride Moex Dock and Norm Direct.
We go here to the top of the seventh inning. As that ball is going to be fouled out of play, it's Deal, Imgarden, and Ott. That one gets out of here quickly. Shelby down at 0-1 on the count. Well, right now in the Renegades bullpen, Boyer just doing some light stretching, no throwing. So I would assume we'll see Goring back out there. No reason to not bring him back out after the way he retired the last two batters in the sixth. That one is in there for called strike two. Now you're just hoping the bottom part of this Renegades order can add some insurance. Both runs coming on the Mattishek blast, and so far through this bottom four hitters, no hits so far. Next delivery, that one downstairs in the dirt. That makes it one ball, two strike count. Still same score down at Clarenda as the Peak Prospects leading the A's by a score of two to one there in the bottom of the sixth inning. That ball is going to be cue balled, and it's going to go foul, but going over, nobody's going to make the grab. Looks like the third baseman, McGinnis, lost that one because the shortstop, Webb, was actually closer to it, and McGinnis overran the ball. So thankful there that you're now going to get another swing out of deal. And for 6, 7, 8, 9 in the Renegades order, not often you'll see a stat like this. Well, the uh, 0 for 8 part is not is not uh, all that insane, but the fact that the only base runner that has reached from that group was on a drop third strike, that's not something you see every day. So one ball, two strike count as deal will step back in. Next pitch on its way. There's going to be a boss hit right up the middle. It'll be a base hit. So Deal will be standing on first base with a leadoff single. That's one way to start an inning. Deal putting that ball right back where it came from on the ground and more than enough to get past the shortstop web and into center field and see how the Renegades react now to a leadoff base runner. Only the second time they've had that all night and the second time in two innings. See if that hurts the Bombers as they were unable to catch what would have been the first out in foul territory. So Imgarten steps in now. He's playing third base. That's Andrew Imgarten. He is 0 for 2 with a strikeout both ways. Got a forwards K and a backwards K. Deal will step off of first base and take a lead after he gets a leadoff single. First now offering from Ferguson. That one's going to be fouled off. Imgarten just a hair under it behind it. Oh, well, Imgarden's been having to catch up with the fastball of Ferguson in these last two at-bats. Hopefully he's able to time it up and put a ball in play with nobody out. So no balls, one strike, and nobody out here. Second batter here in the inning, Ferguson is faced after giving leadoff single. That one caught the inside part of the plate for called strike two. Colby Ott in the on-deck circle. Ferguson already one throw over to Deal, who's leading off first base, and a couple more looks. Seemed to be pretty concerned with him getting a big lead. 0-2 pitch, that one upstairs outside. That'll be ball one. It'll take the count, one ball, two strikes. Again, winner advances to the game tomorrow. That's the divisional championship game at Joplin. The loser, their season's done. Renegades lead by a score to two to nothing here in the top of the seventh inning. 1-2 pitch, that one in there called strike three. M Garden is 0-3 today. Yeah, that's perfect pitch location there by Ferguson. It is certainly a strike, but a little bit more on the hour part of the plate and up, and a good job on the receiving end by Poulton. And now the Renegades have their first out of the inning, or I guess the Bombers have retired the Renegades for the first out of the inning. So Colby Ott steps in here, runner on first base, one out. First pitch to him. He's going to hit that one foul. It'll get out of play. He'll be down in the count at 0-1. And shortstop Taylor Hopkins in the on-deck circle. Looks like a pretty good amount of room to work with on the right side. Four odd if you can take it opposite field. Williams playing closer towards the bag. And the first baseman, Baker, holding on Deal, who just received a throw over there. Yeah, definitely you're right that Ferguson is rather concerned about Deal. He's not the uh, top threat to steal bases, but he is a threat nonetheless. Is that one upstairs? That evens a count, one ball, one strike. Again, one out here. Ott will step back in again on the right-hand side of the plate. Ferguson looks in. 1-1 one, one pitch on its way. There's going to be a ball hit into the outfield. Left fielder going back on it, still on his horse. He will overrun it, but a Justin come back for out number two. Yeah, that's the second time Ott has just missed putting a baseball into left center field. That one, even if he just gets a little less under, it could have potentially got out over the left field wall. But that ball hangs in the air, and Ott just missed really doing some damage with that pitch. This will be shortstop Taylor Hopkins stepping in. Again, two runs, three hits, one error for the Renegades. No runs, one hit, and one error for the Bombers. Renegades lead by a score of two to nothing. First pitch to him. Hit him on the left elbow, so he will jog down to first base. So now there's two base runners on after he is hit by a pitch. Well, this is exactly what you need. Turn it back to the top of the order and uh, 
give the Renegades a chance to drive in a run. Now it looks like Poulton is pointing down towards first base. Don't know if he thought that Hopkins leaned into that pitch. It didn't look like it. That certainly looked to be a way inside. And oh, okay, catcher was just asking to make sure that Hopkins was okay. That's a good, good sign there. Yeah, he he didn't lean into it. He definitely turned the body yeah, so absolutely. it hit the hit the elbow instead of in the chest. So it'll be two runners on with two outs now. Top of the lineup will go to Adonis Forte. He walked his last time up, then hit it a 6-3 out, and then struck out looking in his first at bat. So he is due to get off the 0 for Schneid. Be a good time to do it right here with two runners on. First pitch to him upstairs. Throw down to first base. Back safely is Hopkins. You hear the crowd did not agree with that. Well, Hopkins needs to be thankful that Poulton skipped that throw in there because if that's on the money to the first baseman, Baker, Hopkins is a dead duck, was leaning off the bag and went head first back into it. Since the throw skipped, it took a little extra longer. Otherwise, that would have been out number three. So one ball, no strike count. Ferguson will check the runner at second. That's deal. Now he'll deliver home. There's going to be a ball fouled off into the parking lot, so we'll go even at one ball, one strike. Well, a couple things have gone the Renegades' way this inning. The uh, ball not being caught by the third baseman on the foul ball against Deal ended up singling. Now there, Hopkins would have been out number three, but the throw is skipped in, and we'll see if Forte can make those couple of errors pay. So one ball, one strike, count again, two outs, two runners on. Next pitch, that one's going to be fouled back. Just got a piece of it, did Adonis. So he will still be alive here. One ball, two strike count. Again, two outs. This is when the Renegades have seemed to find their magic and do the damage. It's with two outs on the board. Hopefully Forte. This is now the second time he's seen Ferguson. Walked against him the first time up. Hopefully uh, timing up his stuff a little bit better this time around. 16 of their last 22 runs have come with two outs. That one's going to be fouled off, so we'll still stay at one and two. They said 16 of their last 22 runs they've put on the board have come with two outs on the scoreboard. The one ball, two strike count. Forte digs back in. One, two pitch. Swung on and missed. They say he foul tipped it, so he's still alive. And get a lot of it, but enough to stay alive, and that's all you can ask for in that situation. Be a good time to make the Bombers take advantage of those couple of miscues they had. He pointed them out just a couple of pitches ago. So one ball, two strike count. Forte gets set. One, two pitch. That one's going to be in there for called strike three. And that retires the side. Gets a, a big hand from the crowd here as the Renegades strand two on the base path. No runs. Two left stranded. No errors. In the inning, they did have one hit along the way. So we will go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Renegades still lead by a score of two to nothing. We'll take a quick break and be back as you're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Since 2018, Han Custom Laser Engraving LLC has been specializing in all things custom, using large format, high powered lasers. With some of the most advanced technologies on the market, anything can become a canvas. The state of the art system makes quick work of custom engraving on cups, glass, tile, wood, acrylic, metal, headstones with endless possibilities. They also offer custom one of a kind signs that are sure to make your design stand out. Find them on Facebook at Han Custom Laser Engraving or call 573 489 8732. To find out more on Custom Laser Engraving, LLC, a veteran-owned business. Hi, I'm retired Army Sergeant Trent Dirks, and I want to tell you about an organization that saved and changed my life forever. Retrieving Freedom provides highly trained service dogs to veterans with disabilities and children with autism absolutely free of charge, thanks to the generous donations and support from people just like you. Experts from Retrieving Freedom help throughout the entire process from fostering programs through service dog placement. Retrieving Freedom gave me the skilled service dog, Tracer, who has been my best friend in my lifeline. To find out more about how you can get involved, volunteer, foster, or to donate, visit their website, Retrieving retrievingfreedom.org. Retrieving Freedom, changing lives through the training and placement of service dogs for veterans with disabilities and children with autism. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. New pitcher on the mound for the Renegades. This is Braden Boyer, a six foot, 170 pound sophomore right-hander Goes to Columbia College, hails from Columbia as he steps in here in the uh, seventh inning. Looks like the Renegades are going to turn to one of their front line starters, try and get the final three outs. Boyer's season numbers are a little bit inflated by a rough last outing. Has pitched better than kind of the ERA indicates, but 36 and two-thirds innings. 
giving up 19 earned runs, striking out 41 batters. That's 10 strikeouts per nine innings. And ERA sits at 466. Although that number was a uh, quite a quite a bit lower before the last start. Overall, he's had a really good season. And after Carter Goring was absolutely outstanding for the first six, I would guess we're gonna, if all goes to plan, see Boyer for the final three and try and close out a Renegades win. So this will be batters six, seven, and eight that'll be stepping in for the Bombers. This will be uh, Poulton, then Schmidt, then shoot that first pitch inside, ball one. Want to highlight Gorling's final line because he deserves every bit of the praise for his work tonight, especially considering how this game started. One batter in, he was hit in the face with a throwback from his catcher. But he goes six innings, strikes out six, walks three, and gives up one hit. Most importantly, no runs and in line for the win. That pitch, that one also upstairs. That makes it two balls, no strikes. Get our ball game just shy of two hours old here at Liberty Park Stadium in Dayfield in Sedalia, Missouri. Renegades lead by a score two to nothing. 2-0 pitch. That one swung on and missed. For strike number one. Poulton pulled the green line on that, and he spun around a couple of times. Well, I think that's a good inning for Boyer to come into facing this bottom part of the order, especially when you have a starter go as well as Gorling did for the Renegades tonight. I'm sure it's a sigh of relief for the Sedalia Bombers to see a new face, but hopefully Boyer is able to get things started off on the right track early against Poulton. So two balls and one strike to count. Boyer looks in, gets the sign from Deal. That one called strike two, so we're even at two balls, two strikes. Yeah, Boyer, first two pitches he threw were balls since his comeback with two pretty good-looking ones, and wouldn't want to have him start his outing with the leadoff base runner. Let's see if he can make one more pitch here. So Boyer's 2-2 offering is on its way home. That one swung on and missed for out number one. He gets his first K, one at batter, one K. Yep, exactly how they're going to do it there for Boyer. Misses with the first two for balls and then comes back with three straight fastballs. Essentially says, here it is, try and do anything with it. And Poulton took one and was late on the next two. Great start for Boyer, and hopefully he can ride that and get eight more outs. This will be Nick Schmidt stepping in. And Renegades have a two to nothing lead. So Boyer's going to step off, ask for time, going to check for some signs with his catcher and deal. Just shy of 9 o'clock here on the Show Me Sports Network. Blake Gasway here with you, joined by Ben Schmidt from the Doc and Norm Direct Broadcast booth. Don't forget to go riding with Doc and Norm, Mid-Missouri's leader in Premier Group Travel. Group sizes from 1 to 100 and beyond, they do it all. Doc and Norm, also the official transportation provider for the Renegades. They get us to all of our road games safely, efficiently, most importantly in style. Had a nice cold air conditioner all, all day, but uh, today we might have to have the heater on the way back. To book your spot on your next adventure, call them 573-256-1991 or email reservations at moexpress.com. Well, Dia was out for that mound visit with Boyer. Goring let out a, a loud groan from the dugout and got a pretty big smile out of Boyer. So uh, that's, that's fun stuff, especially considering Goring just pitched six magnificent innings in this ballgame. He's still having fun even after being taken out. So Boyer looks in. He'll get the sign. I think they were just changing up the sign calls here. First offering, and they're called strike one. Well, with this being, uh, I would assume that this is the first time that Deal has caught Boyer, and with Boyer being one of the Renegades' first starters, I think Boyer even started opening day. I'm sure he's seen a lot of Herschler and even Rocker Bomber back there, but a little bit different now with Deal. A one pitch, that ball's going to be uh, fouled down the first base lines. That didn't miss by much, otherwise we're looking at a runner at second base right now. Yeah, now these two, I think, did play a little catch last year for the Renegades, both yep. returning Renegades players. But, you know, somebody you don't see, but uh, for a few weeks all year, can be a little, a little hard to make sure they get the signs right. So, I think that's what, uh, I think that's what they're working on. His deal is changed his signs instead of going between the legs. He's going for taps now instead. Well, works for the first batter, getting the strike out of pole. Now ahead 0-2 on Schmidt, who's 0 for 2 on the day. Just need one more strike here to get this inning kicked off. So no balls and two strikes, says Schmidt down in the count. Boyer looks back in. Deal gets set. That one's going to be a fouled. So it'll still stay at 0 and 2 as that one goes into the parking lot yeah, here. I hope there's no cars parked up against that uh, left side wall because otherwise you may have have a baseball in your windshield. That one might actually even be over in the Little League field over there. So no balls and two strikes. Again, one out here as we play in the bottom of the seventh. Next pitch. That one just missed. Yeah, I think the uh, the uh, 
the groans and the moans here from the Renegade cheering section were well warranted. That pitch looked to, to catch a pretty good part of the plate. Now Boyer's going to have to find another good one here against Schmidt. So one ball, two strike count. Yeah, the groans of the fans for the Renegade said it all. One two pitch on its way. That yes. one in there called strike three. Two outs here in the inning. Yeah, no way that one was going to be called a ball as that was perfect location by Boyer. A pretty much center cut, maybe just a little bit off the inside part of the plate, but that's perfect job by Boyer and Deal on the receiving end. And uh, two strikeouts off and running for Renegade starter tonight, reliever Braden Boyer. So now stepping in, this is designated hitter Cage Shoop stepping in. Two outs here on the board. His team trails to the Renegades by a score of two to nothing. Boyer looks in. 2-0 pitch on its way. Sorry, first pitch on its way with two outs. That one misses ball one. Well, Shoop's still a threat here at the number eight spot in the order. He's over two today, reached on an error, but on the season hitting over 320 and an on-base over 420. So one ball, no strike count. Next pitch. That one just misses for ball two. Yeah, that one had some downward movement to it, and it looked like it may have brought Deal's glove down below the knees and wasn't going to get the call right there. Well, two balls, no strike count. Moyer will look back in. He'll get the sign that he's looking for from Deal. He'll get set, 2-0 pitch. That one down central called strike one. So we'll go two balls, one strike. And two runs on three hits and one error for the Renegades. No runs on one hit and one error for the Bombers. Even though the Renegades feel like they're in uh, complete control of this game, only one hit allowed and zero runs through six and two-thirds. All it takes is a bloop and a blast, and the Bombers knock this thing up. So important for Boyd to stay aggressive. 2-1 pitch. That one in there called strike two. So now we're even two balls, two strikes. Boyer looking to make it a 1-2-3 inning. What better way to uh, to set the tone for Boyer coming in out of the bullpen to strike out the side in his first inning of work? So two balls, two strikes, two outs. Boyer looks in. Next delivery on its way. That one called strike three. Three up and three down as Boyer retires all three by the way of strikeout as he will preserve his team's two to nothing lead. We'll take a quick break as we go into the eighth inning. As you're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. We are State Tech. We are hands-on education. When you choose the number one two-year college in the country, you know you will be ready for your career. That's why at State Tech, we say, from the classroom to your career, we are the employer's choice. We are State Tech. Hello, Blake Gasaway here with the Show Me Sports Network. I've had the opportunity to have some amazing calls, including overtime touchdowns, walk-off home runs, and buzzer-beating baskets. But I've answered another call. That's to serve my community as a volunteer firefighter. Stop and think what would happen if your home or property caught fire and no one was there to put it out. Every day, volunteer firefighters not only save lives and property, but also respond to other emergencies. Nearly two-thirds of our nation's fire departments are manned by volunteer firefighters. And because of this, we simply need need more volunteers to step up and answer the call. Stop by or contact your local fire department and see how you can become a volunteer firefighter today. I answered the call to serve my community. Will you? We go to the top of the eighth inning. It'll be batters two, three, and four coming to play here as this is Wagner, Reether, and Matishak. Facing Ferguson now for the fourth inning are the Renegades and haven't been able to tack on anything against him yet. First pitch misses to Wagner, ball one. Wagner so far tonight, 0 for 2, does have a walk and scored a run on Matishek's two-run blast. Uh, maybe we can see something similar as Wagner was the first base runner in the fourth, scored a run. Hopefully same thing again here in the top of the eighth with the Renegades up 2 to nothing. Bottom of the sixth inning in Clarinda. There's going to be a big swing and a miss. Even the count, one ball, one strike, as Clarinda has taken the lead. Bottom of the sixth inning, they lead by a score of 3-2. to two. So Ferguson's 1-1 one, one offering to Wagner. There's a swing and a miss. That'll make it one ball and two strikes. Clarinda and Des Moines. Who's the host team in that one? Who's the higher seed there? Clarinda is. Clarinda. That ball's going to be fouled back. 
I know you just didn't have a whole lot of luck at that stadium. Hopefully we don't have to go there and later this week if they were to make it that far. So we will stay one ball, two strike count. One, two delivery. That one in there called strike three. Yeah, Ferguson not afraid to attack the zone right there, especially in a two strike count. Gave one to Wagner, uh, middle or lower part of the zone. And good job on the receiving end by Poulton. Brings it in right in the zone. And that's out number one. Ferguson off and running here, looking to complete his fourth inning. So Wagner retired with the backwards K. Now this will be Tommy Reether. Ferguson's first delivery to him, and they're called strike one. Yeah, that off-speed pitch has a lot of movement. Just bent his way into the zone, and that's called strike one. Ferguson working very quickly. So one offering to Tommy. He opens that stance up. He'll foul that one back, so he'll be down in the count at 0-2. And, and just past the 9 o'clock hour here, like Gasway and Ben Schmidt here on the Show Me Sports Network from the Doc and Norm Direct broadcast booth here at Liberty Park Stadium. Dayfield, that one swung on and missed for out number two. So two up and two down very quickly. Ferguson continuing to show the strikeout stuff. In three innings, he had six strikeouts. Now through three and two-thirds, he's got eight. Almost makes you wonder, I mean, where would they be at Ferguson to pitch in the whole game? Although I guess Carson was really good, just had the one blip in the radar, and that was the Matashak home run, the guy who steps in right now. Matashak is due up now with two outs here. First pitch to him. Inside part of the plate called strike one, so he'll be down in the count at 0-1. Matashek, the Renegade's best hitter tonight, has the two-run home run and a walk, been on base two out of three times. Next delivery, there's going to be a bouncing ball back to Ferguson. He'll glove, he'll jog to first, and it'll go one unassisted, so three up and three down. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. Renegade's still leading by a score two to nothing. We'll take a quick break and be back as you're listening to exclusive coverage Renegade's baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Creating custom, handcrafted woodworking projects has never been easier. Become a member of Sawdust Studios and enjoy 24-7 access to a woodworker's paradise. Outfit with industry-leading, professional-grade tools, Sawdust Studios offers endless woodworking possibilities. Don't have woodworking experience? No problem, as Sawdust Studios offers affordable classes from a community of woodworkers, experienced designers, and master craftsmen. Youth classes are also offered for those junior woodworkers. For more information, search Sawdust Studios on Facebook or find them online at Sawdust Sawdust247.com. Sawdust Studios, your community wood shop. River Oak Christian Academy has been providing a strong biblical foundation and academic excellence within a Christian environment to students for more than 16 years. Located in the Jefferson City, River Oak Christian Academy offers kinder prep through 7th grade with 8th grade to be added in the 2023-2024 school year. River Oak Christian Academy's primary goal is the discipleship of the next generation to impact the world for Christ. Average class sizes are just 16 students with a student body composed of families from over 30 area churches. Kinder prep offerings include 3 and 5 full day sessions with kindergarten offering a half day and full day programs. To find out more about River Oak Christian Academy calling at 573-634-3983. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Renegades still lead by a score of two to nothing. They have those two runs on three hits, one error, no runs, one hit. And one error for the Bombers. Boyer's anywhere near as good here in the eighth as he was in the seventh, and we're in for a treat because he struck out all three batters that he faced, but now going to have to face a better part of this order for the Bombers coming up. He's going to start with the number nine hitter, in Webb, who's sitting under 200. But then Williams, who's in at 280, and Hanson, who the Renegades have struggled getting out on deck and in the hole. Going to really have to go to work with the Renegades getting needed six more outs out of him. This will be Webb, Williams, and Hanson will be the three due up. Boyer looks in, time is called and granted. So Webb will dig back in, get on the right-hand side of the plate. Boyer looks in. His first delivery of the inning, and they're called strike one. Yeah, a good starting pitch right there. Fastball pretty much at the knees, gets a called strike looking to Webb. So no balls, one strike count. Boyer looks back in. 0-1 pitch on the way. That one swung on and missed for strike two. Yeah, this is some of, some of the best stuff that we've seen Boyer have so far. I mean, he's had some really good starts, but coming out of the bullpen here, I mean, it's just overwhelming attacking the strike zone. So Boyer looks in. Deal gets set behind home plate. That pitch called strike three, and Webb throws his hands down in disgust. 
Four up, four down, all way via the K for Boyer since coming into this ball game. And better yet, through the four batters he's faced, only thrown five balls. So he hasn't had to work behind in the count a whole lot, and he's been attacking the strike zone. Exactly what you need out of a reliever. We've seen so many times where a reliever comes in and it's just walks and ability to throw strikes, but Boyer is uh, willing to, to just try and get this over as quick as possible. So Caden Williams steps in now, the second baseman. First down free to him, and they're called strike one. Well, Williams already struck out one tonight. He's over three, and if Boyer can get him swinging for a second time, it would continue his strikeout streak. You said Boyer four for four on strikeouts. He'll get settled, one offering on its way. That one in there called strike two. So almost every time it comes out of Boyer's hand, you think it's going to be in there a strike. He's just with both the fastball and the off-speed pitch. I mean, it's in the zone, hittable pitch, and you can be disgusted if you're Webb a moment ago, but he's throwing strikes. he got to swing. So 2 offering from Boyer is on its way. Swung on and missed for strike number three, out number two. That pitch wasn't even in the zone, but <laughs> when every other one is, you, you think you're going to have to swing the second it comes out of Boyer's hands. Williams tries to go upstairs and comes up empty. So now this will be the true test for Boyer. Can he get Anthony Hanson out? Because over the last couple games, Renegade's pitching has not done a very good job of it. So Hanson steps in here. He's reached safely. And one at bat flew out to left field, and another also has a walk. So Boyer looks in. First pitch. That one upstairs, ball one. That's the first non strike that has been called or thrown here by Boyer in six pitches. One ball, no strike count. Next delivery on its way. That one's going to be a ball ripped to first base. Stopping it is Fuller. He'll step on first, out number three. So three up and three down. We'll go to the ninth inning. Renegades lead by a score of two to nothing. We'll pause and be back. You're listening to exclusive coverage Renegades baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Throughout the course of any game, different actions stand out to different people. But everyone remembers a walk-off, especially if it's a walk-off wood bat. Handcrafted right here in Missouri, walk-off wood bat company bats are made with premium grade maple, ash, and birch. Fully customizable to make it truly yours. From the length and weight to the barrel and handle color, you're able to customize every feature of your wood bat, including personalized engraving with a 45-day warranty. In addition to selling custom handcrafted bats, they also offer a selection of bat accessories, including lizard skin bat grips and batting gloves. To help find your confidence at the plate, give walk-off wood Bat Company a call at 816-261-1014 or visit wowbats.com. Hi, this is Nick Hoslog, owner of Hoslog Landscape and Design. Every day, my highly trained team of experts works hard to give you the outdoor living area you've been dreaming of. By focusing solely on landscaping and hardscape construction, this has made us the preferred landscape and design company serving Jefferson City and the Central Missouri area. Thank you for all your continued support in voting us as winners of the Reader's Choice Awards and Jefferson City's Best multiple years running. When you are ready to begin your dream outdoor project, call us at 573-301-9464 to schedule an estimate or visit hoslaglandscape.com. We go to the top of the ninth here. Renegades lead by a score of two to nothing, looking for a few insurance runs here to help out their cause. This will be Fuller, Deal, and Imgarten will be the three due up here. That's batters five, six, and seven in the lineup. Ferguson's first delivery to Fuller, and they're called strike one. Well, as good as Boyer's been in two innings, and you have uh, his utmost confidence that he'll get the last three outs, more runs can never hurt because Staley's just one hit and a home run away. Fuller was looking to jack that one, but lays off of it as it was low and outside the zone. That takes it to one ball, one strike count. Fuller's going to ask for time, step out, just the glasses, make sure he's seeing the ball well here tonight. Looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth for Sedalia. Boyer's going to have to face the gauntlet. Three, four, five, Baker, McGinnis, and Dillman. That pitch way downstairs and outside. Makes it two balls, one strike. Ferguson toes the rubber again. Two, one pitch on its way. That one off speed there and dropped it in the strike zone for strike two. Fuller does have one of the Renegades three hits. Tonight an infield single that came back in the fourth right after Manischek hit his two-run homer. 2-2 two -two pitch, that one swung on and missed, held on to as it was foul tipped for out number one. Well, despite being on the losing end of things, Bombers right-hander Aaron Ferguson has put up one heck of an effort out of the bullpen. Now in four and a third, has struck out nine batters and given up just one hit. I mean, if despite whatever the outcome is, Ferguson should certainly be given some praise for what he's done tonight. So Caden Deal will step in now. He had a single his last time up. You'll see that one for strike one as 
his last at bat. He sent it right back up the middle into center field. So he'll be down in the count. No balls in one strike. Next delivery. That one just a little low. So we'll go even at one ball, one strike. Well, Deal had the single like you just mentioned a moment ago last time. Uh, let's see if he can continue that streak also against Ferguson. There's going to be a ball hit foul down the third base line. It hits off the wall over there. So he'll be down the count. One ball, two strikes. Andrew M. Garten in the on-deck circle for the Renegades, who lead by a score of 2 to nothing here. So we play in the top of the ninth inning. 1-2 pitch. There's going to be a ball that's hit into center field. It'll get down and go to the wall as Deal will try to make it into second. He's going to have to get down. He does. Is this cut off, and he's got a one-out double. Well, Hanson, the center fielder, did a good job of cutting that ball off, but Deal more than enough time as he was hustling all the way to get into second. He's had a good night now with two hits, and the Renegades only have four total. So he's shown up for the play. Now a chance to add on here in the ninth. Looks like we might see a pitching change here as the Boomers headed out to the mound. Looks like the night may be done for Ferguson after he gives up a one-out double. Maybe not. He's out there just in the britches, having a conversation as the infield all comes in. So he's not asking for the baseball yet. As it'll be one out here, runner on second base. That's deal. Renegades lead by a score of two to nothing. Two runs, four hits, one error for the Renegades. No runs, one hit, and one error for the Bombers. As no pitching change as of yet, as they just go out to have a conversation. However, I think Boomer just gave the signal to start the uh, action in the bullpen. Well, M. Garden has not had great at bats so far tonight, but he can forget all that if he comes up with a hit here and scores deal to put the Renegades up 3-0 or put one over the wall. He's got a blast so far this season. Yeah, he's got an 0 for 3 day, so what a good time to come out of that right here with a runner on second base. First pitch to him, fouls that back. Catch the uh, mask of the home plate umpire, says he is A-OK. -okay. Well, this will be the third time that M. Garden is facing the reliever, Ferguson, who's up to 9 Ks now. And just got to hope that M. Garden now third time facing him may start to time things up a little bit. So no balls, one strike count. Again, one out here. Deals on second base. They're not really holding them on. Next delivery, there's going to be a ball hit foul. Goes out of play over the dugout of the Bombers. So that'll make M. Garten down in the count at 0-2. Colby Ott in the on-deck circle. He also has had several well-hit balls here tonight. They've been caught and fielded well. Ferguson checks on deal at second base. Again, nobody holding him on, 0-2 pitch. That one, same location, it's foul, so we'll do it again. Well, it's gotta be tough for M. Garner, who's been late on all the fastballs, but if he really starts to speed things up, Ferguson could come back with that curve and get him way out in front of it. So Ferguson has done great with uh, messing up hitters timing all night, and Ferguson's gonna have to try and combat that here in an 0-2 count. So top of the ninth inning we play here. No balls, two strike count. Renegades lead by two at two to nothing. One out, runner on second. Next delivery, there's going to be a ball lifted high in the air as third baseman is going to come over. That's McGinnis. He'll make the grab for out number two in foul territory. Well, off the right-hander, put a pretty good ball in play against Ferguson. His last time will fly out to deep left center field, and you have to think maybe he's seeing Ferguson well. We'll see if he can do something with two outs and a runner on. So Colby Ott will step in here as he's got two outs and a runner on second base. Again, that is when the Renegades have done most of their damage is with two outs on the board. First delivery to him. He's going to hit that one a mile in the air, but foul as he cranks it, and he just hit the light. The light is out as Ott just cranked that off the light pole and shatters one of the lights here at Day Field. He gets a nice yeah. hand from the crowd here. That takes some skill to do as Ott. There's not a whole lot of room to work with. It's just Colby, aim for that one over there by the scoreboard. So he'll be down in the count at 0-1. That pitch, that one's going to be fouled the other way. That light in trouble. But now he's going to be down in the count at 0-2. Again, Colby aimed for that one in center field. So no balls and two strikes. Again, two outs here. Runner on second base. That's Caden Deal. 0-2 pitch. That one's going to be uh, fouled off towards the first base side. Coming over on it. Running out of room is the first baseman as he had an arm over the wall. And Ian Nolf had to sprint out of the way. He was <laughs> almost taken yeah, out. Yeah, Nolf was the, uh, just running for his life over there. Baker went after him. But uh, now that now that we did look over there, see Ian Nolf is warming up in the bullpen for the Renegades. Yeah, I think that's uh, maybe just, you know, to keep him loose just in case. So no balls, two strikes here for Ott. 
Next pitch to him. That's going to almost brush him on the way by. They say it does not. Didn't miss him by much, but I'm sure that's got to be tough to get out of the way of because that thing was coming in quick, the fastball from Ferguson. I gotta say too, this is the first time I've seen a light hit at a ballpark. So a lot of first this season's. One two pitch on its way. That one swung on and missed for out number three. And the inning is over. So no runs. One hit. No errors and one left on the base path. One less light here at uh, Dayfield in Liberty Park Stadium. As we're gonna take a quick break and be back as you're listening to exclusive coverage, Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. The following public service announcement is brought to you by the Eddie Goodell Society, Jefferson City Chapter 10, doing little things to make a big difference. Want to make a big difference in your community? Be kind to others, drive safely, and put litter in its proper place. Join us in celebrating Eddie Goodell's historic Major League appearance as a member of the St. Louis Browns by doing something nice for someone today. Take the walk, Eddie! When things come out of left field, having a game plan matters. Farmers Insurance has over 90 years of experience helping people play through every stage of the game. We've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything. Talk to Farmers Agent Christopher Scott at 573-896-0131 to see how I can help you stay in the game. That's Christopher Scott at 573-896-0131. We are farmers. Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. Underwritten by Farmers, Truck Fire Insurance, Exchanges, and Affiliates. Products not available in every state. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Boyer still out on the mound for the Renegades. As the Renegades, three outs away from making it to the divisional round tomorrow, as they would travel to Joplin. The winner plays Joplin for the division crown. The loser, their season is done for the year as quick update from Clarinda. It's, they're entering the top of the eighth inning. Des Moines Peak prospects are trailing the A's by a score of three to two. Well, hopefully Boyer can have a similar inning here in the bottom of the ninth that he did in the first two. Struck out five out of six batters being called on in relief. And he's got to get three more outs, and the Renegades will make the drive back to Jeff City victorious. But he's going to have to face the heart of the order, 3-4-5. It all starts with Baker Hughes. Got a hitting over 300, hitting over 330, and on base over 520. Inning completely changes whether or not he gets on here and brings a tying gun up, or Boyer retires him, and a tying gun would stay on deck. That is Baker, McGinnis, and Dillman, the three do up, as Boyer trying to close out and get the 2 nothing win. Bottom of the ninth inning, here we're playing. First pitch, that one's a bit upstairs, ball one. Well, we know Carter Gorling's still engaged over there in line for the win. If Boyer can get <laughs> the last three outs, he's yelling out to his reliever, uh, get, get him the win, get the Renegades the win, and it would give Boyer the save. So one ball, no strike count. Boyer looks in against Baker. There's the delivery, that one down central called strike one, so that evens it one ball, one strike. Yeah, that's a perfect pitch there in that spot by Boyer. Uh, not looking for something too good and just delivers that one right into the glove of Deal in the zone. And the Renegades leading by a score of two to nothing here. Boyer long look in, now he gets the sign. One, one pitch on its way. That one in there called strike two. Took enough off of that to freeze Baker at the plate. Yeah, that's great mixing and matching by Boyer. Goes with the fastball for called strike one, and then, like you said, takes some off of it there. And now Baker's got to be guessing and thinks what he's going to see here in a two-strike count. Again, Boyer looks in, gets the sign from Deal. One-two offering on its way. That one had been inside at the knees. That even said two balls, two strikes. Would love to see Boyer make a pitch right here in a two-strike count. Don't even give Baker a chance in a three-ball count where he could potentially reach and get the tying run to the plate. Attack him right here, make him beat you. Even so, a home run right here, you're still winning by a run. So 2-2 two -two delivery is on its way. That one called strike three, the first out of the inning, and Baker has some words for the home plate umpire. Yeah, that's one heck of a pitch right at the knees. Baker, you've got to know, Renegades have been striking out batters all night, and that pitch with their season on the line, got to swing the bat right there. No one else to be upset with but himself leaving the bat on his shoulder. Baker still having words for the home plate umpire back there in the dugout. 
Yeah, if the pitchers had been erratic all night, I get that, but the uh, Bombers hitters have struck out at 15 and the Renegades hitters have struck out 12. So yeah, pretty much everything close is called a strike. Braden McGinnis steps in now. Renegades two outs away. There's going to be a ball lifted to left field. Cole Wagner going back on it, still going back. And that will leave the park. Well, so that two-run lead cut down to one. That's why you attack this a moment ago. That's why you attack Baker because right there with nobody on, a home run can't hurt you, and that's exactly what happens with McGinnis right here. Renegade still leading this one by a run just because Boyer went and attacked Baker a moment ago and didn't let him get on. Otherwise, we'd be tied. So McGinnis sends it over the left field fence, cuts that two-run lead down to one at two to one. Now there will be a conversation here on the mound for the Renegades. I like this. This is smart. They're going to have a conversation real quick just to try to set, try to settle Boyer down. Renegades still lead by a score of 2-1. Two, to one. two runs on four hits and one error. One run on two hits and one error for the Bombers. McGinnis sends it over the left field fence. Wagner was on the horse. That says 356. And that ball went quite a ways over the fence there. Just like to see Boyer come back and attack Dillman right here, especially after giving up the home run. Dillman has struck out twice. Certainly has the power, but don't even give the winning run a chance to come to the plate. Continue to throw strikes. Boyer hasn't walked anyone yet. No reason to believe he would here. So this will be right fielder in Zach Dillman. He struck out twice, popped out to the shortstop. And Renegades two outs away from making it to the divisional round championship game. They lead by a score of 2-1. to one. Boyer looks in, first pitch. That one just missed a bit outside, ball one. Well, the Bombers dugout is into it right now. Pretty much every one of them on the top step trying to wheel their offense to a tying run here in the ninth. So Boyer again will look in. He'll get the sign. 1-0 delivery on its way. There's going to be a ball hit in the air. It'll be on the infield. Coming in on it is Fuller. He'll make the grab for out number two. The Renegades are one out away from going to the divisional championship. It Dillman was running so hard, he dove into second base even after the ball was already caught from Fuller. So Fuller, a catcher and an outfielder, he's used to having to feel the ball in the air, and he played that one perfectly. So one out away here from going to the divisional championship. This will be catcher Riley Poulton. He is the last hope here, last gasp effort for the Bombers. Renegades lead by a score two to one. Boyer looks in, has two outs on the board, looking for number three. First offering, that one in there called strike one. Boy, this place gets eerily quiet when Boyer gets ready to set. Maybe that means I'm too loud. So no balls in one strike again. Two outs, Renegades lead by a score of two to one. Boyer looks in. So one delivery on its way. That one swung on and missed for strike number two. Boyer is one strike away from getting the victory for the Renegades. What are you hey. thinking here? Fastball, or you're going to try and get him to chase for strike three? That is a great question, and I have no clue which I would do. Whatever it is, let's just get strike three and go home here. Boyer looks in. 0-2 delivery. That one downstairs and low. That'll take it one ball and two strikes. Try to get a chase. Now it's credit Poulton there because out of the hand, that looked like it was going to make its way towards the bottom outside corner. Dove out of the zone, and... Lives to see another pitch for the Bombers. So two outs here in the bottom of the ninth inning. One-two count. You hear the fans start to clap. One-two pitch from Boyer on its way. There's going to be a ball hit in the center field. That'll get down for a single. Well, Poulton with his first hit of the night comes at the absolute must time for the Bombers down to their last strike of their season. And now Schmidt coming in takes a deep breath before walking into the box as the winning run potentially facing Boyer. So Schmidt represents the winning run here. Two outs on the board. Runner on first base. Renegades lead by a score of two to one. This game has given you everything you need here. Sold you the entire seat, but you only need the edge. First pitch. There's going to be a bouncing ball. That's going to get through for another base hit. So runners on first and second with two outs as back-to-back -back hits have gone straight up the middle. As Schmidt on second base. Sorry, first base. Poulton on second base. Yeah, Boyer trying to get a first pitch strike there ahead to Schmidt and left one up for Schmidt to do damage with, and he took it right back where it came from. And now Shoup with the runner in scoring position could tie this game, or even worse, a ball in the gap could win it with looks to be good speed and Schmidt at first base. So 
So Shoup is the designated hitter. He's reached base safely one time due to an error. First pitch upstairs, ball one. Well, this spot is loud as we heard the Sedalia bo Bombers dug out all night. And in case you were wondering, Shoup on the season does not have a home run. So one ball, no strike count. And Boyer looks in. He's given up two hits here. 1-0 pitch. That one swung on and missed for strike number one. Yeah, that looks like Shoup was singing a sw swinging a sword. Not a very good looking hack at that pitch and Boyer gets him behind it for strike one. The time called here is Poulton tying his shoe at second base. Poulton at second, Schmidt on first. They both have back-to-back -back singles. Probably a good idea for Poulton to tie his shoe. I mean, I guess for his sake, I don't think the Renegades would be too upset if he tripped on his shoelace coming around third. So Boyer will look in. One ball, one strike count again. Two outs here. Renegades lead by a score two to one. One one delivery. That one low. Ball two. Oh, Boyer so far through two and a third innings has struck out six, giving up the three hits and one run. But none of those stats mean a whole lot if you can't get the last out number three right here. But he's in a one strike count, just needs two more. So he'll check the runner at second. 2-1 pitch on its way. That one swung on and missed. We're even at two balls, two strikes. Again, down to the last strike are the Bombers. So Shoup has now been laid on two fastballs. Both of them swings and misses. Interesting to see if Boyer tries to go to that well one more time or gets him out in front on an off-speed pitch in a 2-2 count. So two balls, two strikes, two outs, two runners on. It's a 2-1 Renegades lead. Boyer looks in, takes a deep breath. Now he'll get set on the rubber, check the runner at second. 2-2 two -two pitch on its way. There's going to be a bouncing ball. Ott will glove at second. He'll take his time, throw the first for out number three. And the Renegades have won as they win by a final of 2-1. to one. As Braden Boyer comes out and closes out the game. Well, the Bombers dugout was loud there for a couple minutes, but not as loud as the Renegades fans are right now after that win. A well-deserved win. They seem to have control of this game for most of it. Really happy for Carter Goring, who gets the win and goes out and does a chest bump with Forte. And as the Renegades high-five out there on the mound, I'm sure that's got to be a great feeling, knowing they've just taken down the Bombers and have a chance to play for the championship series in Joplin tomorrow. Who would have thought? Boy, i got to say, too, for the, they've already turned off the scoreboard. Apparently, Sedalia is disgusted with the score. They don't even want to look at it anymore. Don't give the Renegades a chance to celebrate their 2-1 to victory. As the Renegades will travel to Joplin tomorrow as the Renegades get the 2-1 to final tonight. Renegades fans here at the ballpark are giving them some cheer, John, and applause. You have to give them a lot of credit. They showed out tonight. I think this was almost a 50-50 split in terms of fan turnout, which doesn't happen all that often for a road game. But Renegades fans came out to the park here tonight to cheer them on, and they're rewarded as the Renegades get the 2-1 victory. Credit Goring with the win. He goes six innings, gives up just one hit and no run, strikes out six. And then Boyer, the three-inning save, also strikes out six, gives up three hits and a run. Renegades pitching struck out 12 tonight. That is is getting it done. Well, we know what the stage is set for tomorrow as the Renegades win the wild card playoff game. That puts them into the divisional round as they will match up at Joplin against the Bombers tomorrow night. That'll be first pitch at 7 o'clock pregame starting about 6.40, 6.45 here on the Show Me Sports Network as uh, Joplin I know they're watching our game tonight and know are listening to our game and knowing what's going on, but if I was them, that makes me a little nervous because the last two games they've had against the Renegades, the Renegades have had their number at a 14-6 final and a 6-4 final. That makes me just a little bit nervous if I'm the Joplin Outlaws. Yeah, and the Renegades have had some success in that ballpark as well. They split 2-2 two and two on the series in in the road games in Joplin, went five and three overall against them on the season. And the Renegades, as of late, the pitching has shown out. It showed out against Joplin a couple days ago and then here tonight. And you now just hope for the Renegades that carries into tomorrow and maybe bring a little bit more offense with you. And all you gotta do is that, and then we'll be potentially hosting a home game on Friday for the championship series, or Thursday, pardon me. Well, not that it really matters for the uh, Bombers as their season comes to a close, but they finish with a record of 22 and 22 with tonight's loss. So they finish 500 for the Renegades. They move to 18 and 24 on the season. But as we said in our pregame, it doesn't really matter. As uh, right now, the records are swiped. Everybody started off at 0-0 even tomorrow night for the uh, Renegades. 
they're still going to start at 0-0. You have to forget tonight almost and just focus on tomorrow. Yeah, I do want to give credit to the Joplin pitching because you really can't pin this offense, or this, this loss on them is the combination of Chase Carson and Aaron Ferguson. Go the full nine, strike out 15 batters. I mean, they had strikeout stuff working all night long, gave up just four hits and two runs, but Renegades pitching held it down. Renegades also played great defense all night, made just the one questionable error call, and the big hero tonight, Manishek, is two-run blast enough to get things done, although... Uh, the, the Bombers made it hairy there for a little bit in the ninth. Well, that's going to do it for our broadcast uh, here tonight. As Any final thoughts before we get out of here, Ben? Well, hopefully you're able to bring the same momentum into Joplin tomorrow. I know I'll be there, and uh, I mean, it's had some success, like I mentioned, in that ballpark. Hopefully it continues because the, the Renegades deserve to host a home playoff game here at some point, and hopefully this can be that year. Well, that's going to do it for our broadcast for tonight. Uh, for Ben Schmidt, I'm Blake Hasaway for the Show Me Sports Network. And until we, uh, until Ben talks to you tomorrow night, I'm probably not going to make the trip. Unfortunately, I've got work commitments, so he's going to go in my absence until he talks to you tomorrow at about uh, 6:40, 6:45. For Ben Schmidt, I'm Blake Hasaway. So long, and have a great evening. You've been listening to the biggest and absolute best game coverage in mid-Missouri on the exclusive home for Jefferson City Renegades baseball. The Show Me Sports Network and the Renegades Radio Network. The Show Me Sports Network broadcast crew are the ones that know your Renegades the best. Exclusive coverage of Jefferson City Renegades baseball has been brought to you by Animal Medical Center of Jefferson City. Avon with Michelle Carty. Boone County Journal, Centurion Cares, Christopher Scott, Farmers Insurance, Doc and Norm Direct, Eddie Goodell Society, Han Custom Laser Engraving, LLC, Hoslog Landscaping and Design, Last Sentinel Firearms, Retrieving Freedom, River Oak Christian Academy, Sawdust Studios, State Tech of Missouri, and Walk Off Wood Bat Company. We hope you've enjoyed the broadcast. Join us anytime on the web at showmesportsnetwork.com or find us on Facebook by searching the Show Me Sports Network. The Show Me Sports Network and the Renegades Radio Network, your exclusive home for Jefferson City. Serving fans throughout the Midwest and even more around the world, this is the Show Me Sports Network. The preceding was an exclusive broadcast property presentation of the Show Me Sports Network and was a high-fidelity all-digital broadcast. This broadcast is copyrighted by the Show Me Sports Network for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this broadcast without the Show Me Sports Network's written consent is prohibited.